Hi there everyone, I'm really sorry about the delay. Oh, it's one of those things, isn't it? You, you get set up to do the live stream and then the computer falls over. So um, basically we've got the cupboard monkey is, uh, in fact, actually, I, I just, uh, let me get the, um, the um, behind the scenes of, <laughs> right, anyway, Angus's trains, big hi to you, welcome back. Now, um, I'm just going to, uh, let's see if I can get up some bits and pieces. Let's see if you can get it up. What? Yeah, push off Cupboard Monkey. <laughs> cupboard Monkey is not feeling very well, so um, let's just... Yeah, I'm off because I'm really ill. Bye. Yeah, see you later. You're on your own tonight, babe. Have you got your cider? And we've got Combat Bunny. Uh, hi to you. Mixed Traffic Engine 206. Big hello to you. And um, let me just get everything sorted out here. We're basically, the computer fell over as uh, we were setting up. We're supposed to be giving our guest a call. Um, we've got a, a guest, Jack Morgan from Hattons, coming up uh, later on in the programme. And uh, that's just, we haven't been able to call him. Um, I've traded a few messages. Everything is set up. We're just hoping that this is all going to work on the day. So... Uh, yeah, we are doing it live. No, I don't want to stay up to date, you silly, silly website. Um, but basically, um, yeah, seat of the pants. Uh, Angus's trains, I don't know what's going on with the spanner thing. I've been having a lot of issues. Um, they've updated OBS and it's messed around royally with various things. They've updated the software on the Mac is messed around with stuff. So uh, really struggling at the moment uh, with um, the, the mechanics of the live stream. Uh, the growl of Blackwood engaged layout. Good evening from a very windy west of Scotland. Good evening to you. Mixed Traffic Engine 206. Hi to you. Derek Grant. Hi to you. Gout Valley. Hi. Steve Cortina Cat. Hi, Jenny. Uh, hi to you. Uh, Mixed Traffic Engine 206. Your reviews are amazing. Oh, I like you. So, oh, the old ego massager is uh, is well on there. New Mills uh, Model Railway, uh, evening to you. Russell Benton, evening to you. Uh, Grey Night, 1971, evening, no trains. Now, we've got a special guest coming on. So one of the things I want to do today, as was announced in the title, this is a follow-up to last week's um, uh, live stream about the whole me announcement. Gosh, that was exciting. You saw Flappy Jenny firing up and everything. Uh, and basically we've had a week for the range to settle in and for people to kind of find their level, what they really need to order, you know, the must haves, the nice to haves, and also get a sense of what is actually, um, uh, um, you know, selling really well. And uh, essentially, um, basically, um, uh, what was I talking? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting distracted here. I've, I'm back on the source, so we've got Magnus Cider here. The reason for this is Cupboard Monkey is ill, so she can't actually nip out to the shops to get some Coke. So I'm going to take one for the team and just drink what happened to be um, in my wine cellar. Well, there's a lot of wine down there, actually, but uh, not touching that. So I'm going to have a dry 1st of February to make up for the one day that I slipped. Um, Stephen Taylor says, hi Jenny, uh, get well soon, monkey. Adam's Rail, hi to you. Angus is trying to hover over three dots from there and click moderator. I'd love to, but I don't get the three dots. Um, it's almost like I've been not made a moderator uh, for some reason in this software. I'm really struggling with, um, with the, the software. It's been updated and for whatever reason, it's got some glitches going on. Hunts Heath Model Railway, hi to you. Blind Paul, hi folks from Windy Midlands, Angus's Trains. Jenny, can you check out my website? Um, maybe later on if we have time, but at the moment we're going to be talking about um, kind of where the Hornby range is at. And in terms of, you know, now that you've all had a great deal of time to actually get through um, that range, I wanted to get a, um, a retailer's perspective. Um, I did try and get a, a little bit of this last week, couldn't get hold of any retailers. I'm guessing they were all really, really manic. I know I've heard back from uh, uh, Rails of Sheffield, actually, so they were sort of sat there frantically typing all this information in, which was why when you went to the Rails site, when you went to the Hatton site, the, the information was kind of going up almost in real time. And it's because, you know, there's a bunch of poor people trying to type all this stuff in. 
Um, but hopefully we're going to be having Jack Morgan uh, a little bit later on. I'm calling him up at uh, 7.30. So stay tuned for that. And it's going to be great just to be able to ask questions. What is selling well and what is really important to get your pre-orders in to avoid being disappointed? And I know this happens every year. I mean, last year, I think it was last year, the W4 Packet, uh, may even have been, no, actually it was the year before, the W4 Packet got announced and boom, they were just gone. And you can't get them for love nor money. So I, I guess um, I did have a few top tips on um, basically what you really, if you wanted, you had to actually um, get your um, pre-orders in. And actually, I've been proven right on quite a few of those. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Colin Wikes, how Jenny, how are you? I'm pretty grand, thanks. 57305 Northern Princess. Hello. Hello, campers. Heidi, hi. Um, Russell Benton, last week was good, particularly your morning broadcast. Yes, a lot of people have actually fed that back. They really enjoyed that. So I'm glad you all did. It was great to have your company. And it was I hope it was as exciting for you guys as it was for me. Um, Mark Samways, hi, hi, young Jenny. Guessing you didn't make the Bogner show. It was super. Please give them a mention. So we're mentioning the Bogner show now. Um, yeah, Bogner's at the Bogner Regis. It's at the other end of the country. So obviously a bit difficult for me to get to. Um, Combat Bunny, I have ordered some trains. Shh. Oh, your secret is safe between uh, um, basically between us and the rest of the English speaking world. Your secret is safe. Uh, Angus's trains. Jenny, I pre-ordered the stuff that I wanted and spent a thousand uh, Aussie dollars. Uh, that's a lot of money. Uh, what's that? It's about um, I'm trying to remember the exchange rate. Uh, what's that about seven eight hundred UK pounds something like that. that's a lot of money you're gonna have to have to, d to do a lot of paper rounds or, st or wash dishes or something to uh, get the money together for that I know, I've already signed up for overtime at work just to be able to afford some of the stuff I really really want um New Mills Model Railway sorry to hear Zoe is not well Russell Benton get well soon cupboard monkey hope you're listening to this get well soon cupboard monkey you want no, no, I'm good. I've got booze now. You want coke, don't you? Are you sure? <laughs> she wants coke. It's like, well, I'll, I'll take one for the team and go over there. I'll get I coke. And I'll, I'll go, and I'll get cookies as well. Just Thanks for the, for the kind uh, words, guys. <laughs> Batteries. I'm assuming that they're not yours. No, no, I'm, I'm good, thanks. But thanks for the thought that I really wanted a, a pair of flat batteries. <laughs> Um, you should be fine. I like transport says hi. I might not be able to stay long today. Don't worry, you can always catch up later on. And it's uh, nice that you turn up at all. yeah, it's always great to see you guys. I have to say, dip in and out. Don't worry about it. And that's the thing. Uh, the Jenny Monday Club is really nice and informal. It's a good community feel. Chat amongst yourselves in the comments. Chat with me. Chat with you. It's just great. It's a great place to hang out on a Monday when there isn't really normally much else to do. Um, Angus's trains, hopefully Cupboard Monkey as well next week. Yeah, um, I'm hoping so too because I can't stand her moaning whenever she's ill. Ooh, I feel like I'm dying. <laughs> Sorry, she's she's putting her shoes on to go outside. I can say what I like now. <laughs> uh, Combat Bunny says, I joined the Hornby Members Club. Excellent. Don't forget to hoover up for yourself one of the H class in the really pretty SECR livery. Um, I got the um, the main range one that when it first came out, so I was quite lucky with that. They did sell out quite quickly, but I noticed that they've still got the Collectors Club one. So um, I'd be interested to see whether you uh, grab yourself one of those and certainly keep us posted on what other offers are coming up. Because, you know, I, I've been over the years, I've joined and been members on and off. The Backman Collectors Club, the Hornby Collectors Club, the Daypole Collectors Club. And they're all really good, actually. Um, I, I, I don't I only like to be a member of one at any one time. Um, and at the moment, actually, I'm not a member of any of them. But certainly there's some great stuff in there and you get your magazine and stuff. Um, so uh, when I was a member, you got the, the two Terriers for I think it's about £35 each, was it? which was an amazing deal even now. Uh, Combat Bunny says, best thing I ever did, you get a discount on purchases. I can imagine if you've got, like me, I added up everything, my my, excuse me, my Uber wish list uh, on, on Hornby, uh, I added up about four and a half thousand pounds. So I can imagine, if you imagine 10% off that is, um, is uh, 450 quid? No, no, that's 10%. Uh, yeah, 10%, of course, yeah. So actually, you could save quite a bit of money. 
Magnus Cider. Having a day off dry January. I'm going to do dry uh, dry February the 1st. Um, Ham Shackleton. Ah, there you are. Hi, folks. <laughs> Berry 120 dipping in and out between a hobby programming project using the network rail data feed. So feels very topical. Gosh, that, that does sound pretty good, actually. Uh, yeah. Um, and that's the thing. Um, uh, even though my computer here decided to have a strop and crash 10 minutes before the stream started and then took its time uh, booting up, uh, computers do actually bring an awful lot into the hobby. Uh, and I know Hornby have been trailing ahead some of their, their is it Railmaster software. Uh, I think there's a new version of that out, um, plus all the, all the trimmings. So basically, um, yeah, it's never been a, a better time. But certainly there's a lot you can do with computers and the hobby. Um, Lifestyle Unleashed. Hi, Jennifer. Just popped by. Been busy, busy working on the latest Enwin's 3D Models products. Ah, interesting. Yes, of course. Yes, I've just re just reviewed your products. Um, I filmed the video today and uh, I know you were a bit worried, actually, you, you um, about <laughs> whether they're like, oh, well, you know, I really don't like these. No, I, I'm sh I, actually, I was really quite impressed by them. I'm not natively a big um, 3D print um, devotee, but I was very impressed with the model. So I think you'll be well relieved and happy with the end review. That's hopefully going to go out on Wednesday. Um, so it'll get edited up. Um, either late on tonight or over tomorrow to go up on Wednesday. Um, so, yeah, something to look forward to. Something a bit different. And I think that's one of the things that um, is really good to have on the channel. A wide range of different things. Um, Berry120. Uh, oh, we've got Robot Monkey as well. Just disappearing off. So, Berry120. Oh, it's just disappeared off the top. Robot Monkey says, hello, Jenny and all. Uh, Bob Patterson um, laid out a few deposits for the rocket sets, both the pre presentation box and standard. Yes, that's good choice. Certainly the presentation box, the one in the, with the Triang livery lettering, has proved very, very popular. So um, uh, one of the things actually I'm, I'm going to do is it's happening here in the background. I don't want to not buy recommended. Let's go price high to low. And what's interesting, actually, I noticed is that the Hornby site is it's um, I think some of the pre-orders are actually outpacing the speed at which the site gets updated because you see something that says in stock. And then all of a sudden, uh, when you click on it, it says out of stock. And then you go back to the main page and it says it's in stock. So uh, we're on the Hornby site here just to give you an idea. They said they would never sell. How wrong they were. If you look immediately there along the top row, those O-Gage models are out of stock at Hornby. All four liveries. And I've been keeping an eye on this. The Midland Railway one went out of stock first, followed by the Caledonian Railway one. Uh, the That one there, CR number one, Centenary Year Limited Edition, 1920, uh, which is third along. And I actually predicted that the Caledonian Railway one would sell out first. There's a thing about blue locomotives apparently selling really, really well. Um, but actually, um, it sold out second. And then the Great Northern and the London and North Western Railway, I don't know what order they sold out in, but certainly um, they have now sold out. So you're going to have to go to stockists and hopefully we'll find out from Jack Morgan uh, just how well they're selling through Hattons uh, a little bit later on, if we can get hold of him. And it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, what things they're keeping their eye on. That basically, um, if you if you like the look up and you want one for your collection, you have to bite the bullet and pre-order. Otherwise, if you wait until the day that they're actually released, you're going to really, really struggle. I think. Uh, Angus is strange. Says I've I may have I, I may have an order uh, have to order a hush hush shh <laughs> in A four B R condition. I must admit. The Hush Hush um, is what I'm looking for as well. And it'd be interesting to find out um, if we can get that information uh, later on, uh, how well the Hush Hush is going on pre-orders. And is that one as well that essentially you're going to have to pre-order, certainly? I mean, I think it's going to reappear in the in the range, although there was only one prototype, I believe. So there's only so many versions they can do. Um, so that, there's one to watch, actually. Um, I'm not sure which way it's going to go. Uh, I'd guess that um, they have the means to increase the production run on, on stuff like that. Uh, it's not a limited edition, as far as I'm aware. So basically, um, yeah, uh, one to keep an eye on. Now, I'm scrolling down this list. 
and we stick here as well the Hornby Double Duchess of Athol. Now I've got a pre-order in for this. I knew that it would go quick. I said you, it would go quick. And actually, though, some people poo-pooed. Um, actually, some people poo-pooed that O gauge and went, "Oh, what are they doing? What a waste of time!" But look, out of stock, out of stock, out of stock, and out of stock. It was a shrewd move by Hornby. I know that that they're, they're uh, limited to only a hundred of each items, but. Um, you know, they've sold them. As far as Hornby are concerned, they've sold out the, the allocation that they allocate for their online shop. And that must mean that they're selling pretty well for um, everywhere else as well. Um, but um, let's have a look. Uh, bish bash bosh. Uh, Swindon 1969. Do you get the discount ordering online in the Hornby Club? I, you certainly did, actually. Yeah, uh, the, the, dis the discount was from buying from the Hornby website. It didn't work if you went into a model shop, as far as I'm aware, but it could have changed, don't know. Uh, but certainly if you order off the website, there's a point at which you put in your membership details and it, it takes the discount, I think. Um, Steve Cortina Cat says, uh, February 1st is a Saturday, though, so not a school night. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, Tim's Trains. Jenny, any chance I could have my shiny blue spanner back? It would make my 2020 year well, and when my... Stevenson Rocket arrives. Hey, hey. Um, as I was saying to Angus's trains, I've had a few issues with the software. And at the moment, it's not letting me make um, people um, uh, moderators for some reason. It seems to most people who were moderators do appear to still be moderators. Um, but uh, I haven't been able to um, to give Angus's trains his spanner of ultimate power back. And for the same reason, I can't. Um, I'd love to, but I can't. So we're going to look into that, but uh, bear with us on it. Robot Monkey uh, says, anyone else looking forward to batch three of Project Genesis? And actually, that's something maybe uh, might be able to ask Jack Morgan about. Of course, you've got to remember a lot of the stuff they just they can't tell you commercial secrets and all that. So I'm not going to push because that would just be rude because uh, I know that there's a lot of things he just cannot talk about uh, with things like upcoming projects. But certainly, uh, might actually be interested to see if he's um, he's prepared to let us know just you know if there's any developments on that, and also uh, perhaps if anything's turned up in research as to further future liveries that they might have their eye on um, if the um, the first three batches sell incredibly well. Um, let's have a look. Uh, I like transport. Um, uh, it's a good magazine, but that's the only reason for joining. It's very expensive. Um, you know, if that's the only reason. Yeah, definitely. It's one of those things. Yeah. Um, Somerset Andy says, hi, Jenny. Did Zoe get my email about the class 47? I'm going to say, yes, she did. And thank you very, very much for that. That is amazingly generous. Uh, so um, it's, I'm, I'm flabbergasted sometimes just how generous you guys are. And it does mean a lot to me. It's certainly it's a locomotive that was on my hit list at the time. It sold out. But thank you ever so much. That is such a generous offer. And um, if you send your um, your address with it, then uh, what we'll do is we'll pop some signed copies of my books in the post to you because I was just really generous. So um, as a humble offering of my 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 token and my thanks. But thank you very much for that. So um uh, that is, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that Zoe has responded to that or will be responding to that. But yeah, I have seen the email, but thank you very much. Um, uh, Canadian Rail fan, hi to you. How's the layout going? Um, I know you, you, you had quite a... a um, uh, a, a layout that um, that kind of creates envy, the size that you said that you had on that. So I'm just curious how that's going. Um, Josh's Trains, Adventures and Journey says, I have ordered the normal Rocket R3810 and also the Avanti Pendolino for the layout. Yeah, the Rocket, I believe, is selling really quick now. I'm just looking through here. Now, we said Hornby 00, I predicted that this would sell out and this has sold out. I have pre-ordered it. Um, and let's just check this is one of the things that um, I just want to see whether this comes up or whether I just break the Internet. Did you say that the rocket had shot off the shelves like a rocket? Yeah, funnily enough. Um, so let's just see. Uh, this is still available to pre-order. What I've been finding actually on the Hornby site. Oh, you you oh, you saw it. Let me take this heavy. Blimey, blimey, let me take this heavy bag off you. Um, what on earth did you do? You said you wanted cookies. <laughs> oh, coke. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, what are you having? You got any more? Give me a call. 
Well, hold on. Let me take a couple, and then I will I will pass the entire thing back to you. But yeah, uh, guys. So as you can see, um, it's it's. What, what, what am I passing that to you? I was going to take. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, you did actually. There you are. And um, Ooh, so heavy. That's. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. There you go. Like are you sure? Yeah. I'm sure she's fattening me up. But yeah, um, essentially. I'm not, not supposed to tell people my secret master plan. <laughs> um. One of the things that was happening was that they would show out of stock when you clicked on them, but still show as uh, in stock on the main page. So I'm, I'm just um, curious whether that's still the case. Not with that one. Let's just check on the Hush Hush. On the rocket? No, oh, the Hush Hush. Oh, no, no, no. Stop it. Um, I'm thinking... Uh, My goodness, since when? Yeah, uh, LNER Class W. Let's just check on this. They say pre-order um, uh, available on the main... You're pulling my hair. Um, let's see. That still says that it's available to pre-order. It has to be said. So, um, uh, yeah, as, as you say there, Berry 120. Credit to Simon. A lot of odd or controversial models released have all gone out of stock quickly. Yeah, it looks to have done a good job there. Uh, Mark Wilson, what is a Hush Hush? The hush Hush is the, is it the W1... So uh, there we are, the class W one. Oops, my. Um, so you see there, down there. Oh, I was going to point there. to the screen, but you can't see the screen. Yeah, they were rebuilt to look actually like um, a slightly strange um, A four Pacific is the best way of describing it. Can I just say, uh, Somerset Andy? Uh, yes, I did get your email about the class forty seven. Uh, sorry, it uh, took me a while to reply to you. I have replied now. Apologies, but uh, yeah. I, I'm going because, oh my goodness, my side is Yeah, you, you go and I'll enjoy you yourself. I will. Um, but yeah, that is, yeah. So we're looking down the list. I'm just keeping an eye on time. We've got three minutes and then hopefully I'm going to be able to um, um, put Jack Morgan on, well, get Jack Morgan on the line. And I've got a few questions I want to put to him principally about the Hornby 2020 range. Now we had last week, we had Michael Day giving us the perspective from Hornby, from inside Hornby, which was really, really great and really good of Michael Day to um, give us a call. And uh, if Michael Day is watching, a big, big thanks to that. It was really, really appreciated. And thanks for taking the time out to speak to us. Um, also had um, Callum Wilcox. So a big, big hello to Callum if you're uh, watching today. And it was great to hear from Callum because um, Callum works for Railway Modeler. He's also a YouTuber, but he's recently worked for uh, started to work for Railway Modeler. So it was interesting to get kind of the um, the the trade press's um, um, view on the range. And we also had uh, Cottesmore, Dave Jones, on which was. Um, it was was really interesting as well. Just to get another YouTuber's point of view, I wasn't able to get a manufacturer, no, a retailer on, but to today we're going to try. In fact, um, let's just have a look. What's it? Tim Strain says, "What's your snacks tonight, Jenny?" I'm munching on mini Battenbergs. Oh, mini Battenbergs, they're quite nice. Uh, white chocolate cookies, apparently. Um, Aaron Izzard says, "Wait a second, they're making classical O gauge template models. When did this happen?" Yeah, it was one of the really exciting. Uh, there were so many exciting announcements. But yeah, uh, for the 100th anniversary, they're producing 100 each of those. Uh, but, oh, excuse me. Um, uh, if, if I miss any of your comments, I, I'm not deliberately missing comments. It's just quite simply, they're coming in quite fast. But yeah, um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, bish, bash, bosh. Um, yeah, so uh, basically, they're pretty much duplicates of the original, original ones that uh, Hornby made in 1920. So, yeah, uh, controversial. I wouldn't say they're controversial, only maybe in as far as the fact that um, that basically um, nobody expected it. Nobody expects the O-Gage models. <laughs> uh, but, um, right, I'm going to go and try and get Jack Morgan on the line. I don't know if he's actually watching the live stream at the moment. But hopefully this will work. So, boom. I don't know whether... Um, can people hear that? It should be the sound of a phone ringing. Hello? Hello? Hi there. Hi, can you hear me okay? Hi there, can you hear me at all? I, I can, yeah. You're all coming from all good? Yeah, I uh, yes, you are loud and clear. I don't, uh, can I just uh, who um, people in the live stream? 
Is that uh, coming through? Okay, Ham Shackleton says yes, can hear the phone. Uh, great, this is Jack Morgan from Hatton's Model Railways. Uh, you may also recognise him from uh, the Hatton's YouTube account. You do an awful lot of videos over there as well. And it's it's great to have you on, really, just to get a, a, a retailer's perspective, principally on the Hornby 2020 range. I know it's been a week since it came out, uh, but that's kind of allowed it to bed in a little bit. And I'm guessing you're seeing a lot of pre-orders coming in for this entire range. Oh, absolutely. Like, first of all, thank you very much for having us on the show. Uh, it's great to be here. Great to see everyone in the chat as well. Um, but yeah, we've seen a tremendous amount of interest in the range this year. And there's just, there's so much to cover really, isn't there? I mean, we've we've had a week to digest it, but I think there's 1,500 products in the catalogue this year. And yeah. anyone who watches our live streams will see, I held up the thickness of the catalogue uh, to the camera and you can really see just, just how big of a catalogue it is this year. So it, yeah. it is really exciting, not just for for us but for the entire modeling community really so yeah and i mean i'm guessing when you first saw some of those items i'm guessing that actually you were um probably as, as surprised as i was um i mean um i did a live stream on the morning when it went live and some of those models even if you'd have given me a million guesses I would never have guessed that they were going to actually do something like that. I mean, was it similar to you, for that for yourselves when you finally saw what they were planning on releasing? Yeah, pretty much. It was pretty much the same thing for us, really. There's been some incredible surprises here. Like, I think you've mentioned a few on the stream already. I have been watching since the start, by the way, so I've, <laughs> I've seen uh, what you've been chatting about. But there's, um, you know, some of these experimental locomotives coming through there, like the Hush Hush, the W1. Yeah. Um, and just some staples that you know people have been asking for for a long time like you've got your standard class 2 mt coming in there you've got the new version of the class 91 um and just you know bolstering the existing range there as well so there were some surprises but you know it's it's all good stuff really yeah uh, i mean uh, I, I take it but now you, you've had a week um for the pre-orders to start coming in is there anything in particular on that list that is is really just selling out or selling so well that if people really want to get it, they're going to have to get pre-orders and they'll be disappointed. To be honest with you, <laughs> you're probably not going to like this as an answer, but a lot of the catalogue is selling very well, to be honest, because there is such a, <laughs> such a diverse range here. Yeah. That there's kind of something for everyone. So I feel like a lot of the model community is just jumping on this because... You know, there really is a lot here for people to get their teeth into. Um, what I would recommend is if you are really looking to get your hands on something, I would pre-order it as mm. soon as you can. Obviously, our policy with patterns is we don't take any money up front. It's only when the item comes into stock. So there's no there's no stress there, really, gives you a bit of time mm. to save up as well. But I really would recommend getting your pre-orders in because we are seeing a lot of people getting excited, especially for a lot of those new tooling items coming through, which we've not yeah. seen before. A lot of these surprise experimental and uh, more unusual locos coming through. Those have been a tremendously popular. And of course, I think uh, you might have on the screen right now where uh, the, mm. such as the uh, up-to-date roll and stock, like the Avanti Pendolino there and stuff. It's, you know, these exciting new liveries for the railway that people have been looking out for. So, uh, it's <laughs> a lot of it has been tremendously popular really i couldn't put my finger on just on just one or two items really i mean I, i'm looking um i've had a look at the hornby site and it's already showing out of stock on their web web shop of some of the um things like the o gauge models i'm just wondering is that something that you're finding is selling out very quickly for yourselves as well because i know they were i mean when i saw them i thought that that must be must be a misprint they're making perfect replicas of the trains from 1920 and yet um i mean they're they are expensive but they do appear to have, have sold out um is is this something that um you have very limited um um uh, allocation of these well those ones specifically i believe they were exclusive to the hobby website and um, oh, so we right. went in to get our hands on those ones um, so obviously, like I think, like you said earlier, I believe they were a uh, hundred in quantity each. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they were, I think, a special for the hobby site. Um, right. But yeah, I'm with like you. you say, um, there's yeah, quite a few that uh, you know they are really filling up our all our, our, our allocations are filling up very very quickly indeed. So yeah, the uh, the pre orderings what what you've got to do these days. Uh, Unfortunately, the way the world, I suppose, yeah. But you know. 
I mean, I have heard that the, the Stevenson's rocket uh, with the Triang livery and the Hornby 00 Duchess of Athol, um, I've heard from um, a few other retailers as well that they're selling particularly quick as well. Um, and I just wondered, are there any others that um, you may even be sold out of? Um, or um, I, I don't know how many they're actually making of some of these. I think it's it 500 for the Athol. Um, but certainly, yeah, I'm just looking here now. The, the Stevenson's Rocket Centenary Pack in the Trying Box is showing, um, uh, yeah. is going really, really quickly. Uh, in fact, actually, uh, just a warning to people out there who um, haven't yet got their pre-orders in. Even the, the regular range one is showing as uh, sold out to pre-order on Hornby. So I'm guessing they, they need to get their skates on and, and get a pre-order in for something like that or they're going to miss out. Yeah, I believe with a lot of the, the centenary edition stuff they've done as well, they've tried to keep that, you know, there's a bit of exclusivity there, isn't there? It's trying to keep that special and make that an exciting product for people. So obviously they've brought down the numbers on those a little bit. Um, so we have seen a lot of interest in, in those items because obviously they're, they're representing every decade yeah, yeah. of Hornby's existence, really, aren't they? So there's a bit of speciality there. Um, so there has been a lot of interest in those. Like I say, I'm not too sure if we've had anything fully sell out just yet. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, all of the um, stock levels for what we have um, and the availability products, it's all up to date on our website um, as soon as, you know, every, everything is, is uh, live updated all day. Um, so I'd, I'd always recommend just checking out our website and just seeing what you can do. But we always have the option on there to pre-order or if not, you can add it to your wish list. And that's something I always do recommend because if you do yeah. that, you can um, get signed up for a notification then. So if we do get more of an allocation than we thought, or if it does come back into stock in the future with another batch or something like that, you'll get an email through so you can jump on uh, as soon as that gets announced and uh, make sure you get yours as well. Mm. Yeah, I'm, ju I'm just looking actually down the list on the um, the Hatton site. And uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to follow. And um I mean, I, I'm looking down here and I keep seeing things. And like you say, a wish list is a great way of keeping track um, and without necessarily having the commitment of thinking, oh, my God, my basket's got to like four and a half thousand pounds. I think mine did when I was putting all the things in, which I really, really <laughs> wanted. Um, but I mean, was there anything that you were surprised not to see in the range? I know over the years, Hornby has produced so many great models and you know even going well back a lot of iconic models was there anything you thought oh, i wonder why yeah. they haven't done that for me personally to be honest no um when we saw stuff start trickling through from our guys who were down at hornby on the day i was just surprised by the the breadth of it really i mean there's so many there was so many fantastic new toolings here and obviously one thing that's really great is they've really bolstered the existing ranges that they have. Mm. So obviously we're getting more liveries for the ever popular items in there, like Peckett. You've got the pen, or, you know, coming back into the range, like I mentioned before. Um, you've got plenty of new um, HSTs coming through. And those new tooling items, there is, it, they, they were quite exciting for me. There's a couple that I, I, I was uh, sorely tempted by, <laughs> by, obviously, like the APT and the Rocket. Um but yeah, in terms of things of surprise not to see, not really for me to be honest, because there, there is such a huge range here. Yeah, um, I think they've they've knocked it out of the park really with this one. Yeah, I've heard that over and over again from um, people across uh, retail, across uh, trade publications, other YouTubers, and just hobbyists as well. That it does feel like like Hornby's kind of um, they've got their mojo back was how it was described to me. And, uh, you know, I know that they have struggled over um, a few years. And I, for me, it feels like they've turned a corner. I mean, do you think that this is the way ahead? Are you looking at this and thinking, yeah, that is, is well played, Simon, well played? Yeah, I think so. It's, it's, it's invigorating to see, really. You, you can see the commitment here to really push forward with the brand and, you know, the they take you know they're taking an interest in the history of Hornby and model railways in general with all the mm. centenary range of items but just to see the diversity in the range really is it is quite comforting really to know that you know there is that commitment there from Hornby so I am excited to see what comes through and one great thing that um I'm really happy about myself is how quickly a lot of these items are going to be coming through so they're announced yeah. as part of the catalog and the majority of this is coming through this year 
and there's a few bits slipping into 2021 but mm. it is it's great to you know you get you pick up your catalog and you know you're only going to have to wait six to 12 months at, at most really for a lot of these items so that's something i think you know it's it's something a lot of people do talk about a lot of the time is the you know the waits for different projects to come out um so it, it's nice to just get a catalog and within the next year you're gonna have it so yeah, I mean, I've already seen there's a, a couple of items appear to have actually um, turned up already. I noticed when I was I was running down the list, there was a couple of things showing as available. I don't know whether they're things that have kind of been carried over from 2019 or whether they are new to this range. But it's something I think Hornby do really well, that when they announce an item, they're normally so well along with the actual um, production process that there isn't that way. I know some people might say, well, it gives me less time to save up. But I like yeah. not having to wait. It's something I think that Hornby does do really well. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one thing that we got to see at the show, which we've done a few videos over on our YouTube channel about, is a lot of the models um, do have, um, first, they're all, you know, production sample stages or they're at first EP stages. Mm. So there was something to see for most of the projects, really, even stuff like the APT and the 91. They had some very early samples, those to see. So, you know, they are, I suppose mostly with what our, our own projects as well that we've tried to um bring them through at a stage where there's something to show for it really so Hall yeah. has been quite good at doing the same i mean I, as a as a retailer that um, does commission a lot of your own models are you, are you always a little bit apprehensive when it comes up to the time when other manufacturers announce models you think oh god are they going to bring out something that we're sort of working on but haven't yet announced or is that not something that really tends to crop up I suppose there can be an element of that sometimes, but there is a lot of communication between because we're all in, in the same, you know, industry at the end of the day. We, you know, we're all kind of in the same boat, so to speak. So there is communication there, and obviously we're we're all working on different things. So yeah, not not really, I suppose. Mm. I, and um, actually, to talk a little bit about uh, some of your own projects, there's a few people asking about the Project Genesis coaches, and uh, just wondering whether um, oh, yeah. as um, you know. I know you've announced recently that you're introducing the brake coach um, in light to what people have been asking for. And there's also a, uh, another bunch of liveries being announced for is it batch three. And uh, I'm just wondering, yes. as, as you're researching these, do you find that there's sort of like more and more liveries that you may not necessarily have even known about that you're looking at and thinking, we could do that and we could do that. I mean, it, 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 it strikes to me, it's almost like it's the model that keeps on giving and for so long we've um we we've kind of been getting by on the the, the little four wheel hornby railroad coaches and sort of squinting and going well it's okay but i mean finally it's kind of addressed the issue that we've got all these great pre grouping locomotives and nothing for particularly for them to pull um you know do you find that you know you keep looking into it and it's like oh we we can do that we can do that I think you hit the nail on the head saying it's a gift that keeps on giving, really. It, the more we see, the more, the more we keep finding with these, yeah. with, well, with that era of coaches, really. Obviously, we have got a bit of an amalgamation of the different styles, but there was no easy way to put it. There was thousands of different types of these coaches out there, and yeah. everyone was making their own types of these, these things. And yeah, we, we do keep finding more and more great history on them. One thing that we've really been excited with with this project is the community involvement with it, mm. um, which is some, it's in a way we've never you know had before, really. It's just the amount of input and fantastic advice and uh, information that people have been able to provide to us, really. So with the development of the, uh, the drawings and the other samples for it, we've had a lot of great feedback there to make sure people, we are producing the ultimate version of this coach that mm. everyone's going to enjoy really so it was great to get a lot of feedback from guys on the forums over social media even through youtube and, and other places as well and at the exhibitions which we attend so it was great to get that feedback in there and like you touched on obviously we've announced the the full break versions of the coaches which is something a lot of the community were really asking for mm. and some fair deliveries too but there's just uh, we've we tried to cover as much as you can obviously if you on the website you can check out you know the first batch We've got your big names coming through, your GWR, your Great Northern Railway, London Northwestern, SECR, all the big stuff coming through there, really. And then once we get into into batch two, it starts to get a little bit more niche, but you've still got your GCR, Great Eastern, Lancashire and Yorkshire, Midland, all that sort of thing. And then even down to batch three, 
you know, you've got North Eastern Railway, Caledonian Metropolitan coming through there. And, you know, all of these will be coming through in, over the next few years. And the, you never know, there might be even more in the future. But we've tried to, we, we've all three of these batches. I feel like we've delved through a lot of history here. Um, but with the, the breadth and variation of these coaches, I think, you know, it is, like you say, it's going to be the gift that keeps on giving, really. Yeah, and what surprised me in a way, I hadn't quite realised it until you guys embarked on this project and put a lot of these liveries that you were proposing out there. I hadn't realised just how long lasting these coaches were because you're doing them in departmental liveries as well. Some of which, I think there's one in particular lasted in um, on on the main, um, I think it was a breakdown tool van until early 1980s. So th these weren't just yeah, free correct, grouping yeah. um you know they 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 lasted a very long time so there really is something for everyone here it's it's staggering really like how you know how how long these things could be seen around the network and it's not even you know for uses like that they, you know you can still see them in use on preservation railways now mm. so guys in the modern day can still use them on layouts and even if you wanted to get a bit wacky <laughs> I'm sure you will have heard stories about how these coaches were all converted for holiday homes or caravans or yeah, yeah. chicken coops and, and what have you. So there's even a fear, not if you wanted to, there's an option for something <laughs> like that as well. So that's the, a very the, expensive really is a fascinating bungalow. story. Yeah, I, I, I could have. Yeah, exactly. Somebody will, you know, somebody will. But um, um, yeah, because a lot of the it's one of the ways that the, the preserved um, examples have survived is they tended to get built into things like bungalows uh, down on the south coast. Um, yeah. So I suppose that in some respects, that makes researching a project like this a little bit easier insofar as um, there's actually quite a few examples out there that you can go and look at and kind of size up and um, get a, a feel for for details that maybe photographs of the era would miss yeah that's it and like i say there, you know there's a few out there that's still on preserved railways obviously some in some cases over time they might have had the chassis swapped out with perhaps mm. a wagon or something like that which makes things a little bit tricky but you know there's a lot of different research sources that have gone into this historical and combining that with modern day research as well but again the community has been fantastic with this being able to provide photos for us um, and people have been sending us in you know current day shots of the different liveries that are around on on different railways too so it's really been great to have that that involvement there as well um, brilliant and also one of the other things that's probably more true to my heart i love small industrial locomotives and you brought out the uh, andrew barclay which um again i suppose yes. it, in, in a way a lot of people were as amazed as they've been with the hornby announcements that it's like wow finally somebody's bringing out a, a, a beautiful little small industrial um I, have you got plans for uh, another release of different liveries um following on from the um the ones which uh, are, are currently out all I can say is never say never, really. As you can see on the screen right now, obviously, there's still quite a few variations in stock. And with the first batch, we did try to cover quite a variety. Yeah, yeah. Um, from examples serving across the country and through different areas and what have you. Um, at the moment, um, nothing on the cards right now, but you never know for the future. But what all I can say is really, if, if, if it is something that people would like to see, I do urge you just to get in touch with us, really, and let us know, make it, make it clear on social media and... Um, through email perhaps to we've mm. got an email address called ideas at uk. so if you ever have any suggestions that goes straight through to our development team as well um so you know we, we always take ideas on board very seriously as well so it, you never know what might make it in the future no worries and also i'm, I'm seeing in the uh, the chat room people are asking any news on the on the 66 uh people asking for any info on the release dates um i'm presuming that means more to you than it does to me <laughs> it does um yeah so we obviously a few people have already started to get theirs and um, the early pre-orders went through um just around christmas time and we're expecting um further models um within the month hopefully in the next couple of days we'll have a fully confirmed exact date um for when they'll be coming in um but what i recommend doing is just head over to our website go on to mm. the um class 66 uh, project page which you can get to from the front page of the website. Go to uh, product news and you're able to find it in there. And there's a, a little table in that page and it'll just tell you the different dates for the different codes coming in. And we, we try to keep that up to date as much as possible. But like I say, we should have a, a definite date very soon um, for when uh, the next lot are coming through. 
Right, no problem. Um, I, I, I was going to ask you a question. It's just completely gone out of my head. Um, <laughs> I, I had a really great question, to ask, and then I saw that in the corner of my eye. Um, um, so what's coming up on uh, the Hatton's YouTube channel? Have you got um, any great projects that you can tell us about that we should look out for? Well, I suppose Cheeky Plug, as always, <laughs> is uh, our Platform One series, which we do uh, every Friday at 1 p.m. So myself and uh, uh, Dave Martin are live every single Friday. And we just go through the latest news. Um, and obviously, you guys can get in touch in the comments and let us know what you think. Um, so that's that's great every single Friday. And if anyone subscribes to our channel recently, you'll have noticed a lot of Hornby videos coming through there. Yeah. Um, obviously, with so much to cover in this range announcement, um, we've just been getting out a lot of different videos um, each on, you know, trying to give it a bit more of a look at the uh, individual projects in depth because it's so easy to, you know, pop the catalogue out there and go see what you think. But it's nice to just put a little highlight to some of these projects and perhaps some that have been a little bit buried on underneath the, the slightly more exciting new tool links and stuff like that. So <laughs> we tried to cover a bit, a bit of variation uh, on our YouTube channel. So there's a few of those coming out as well. So... Yeah, lots, lots to come, really. Brilliant. Well, look, um, thank you very much for talking to us. And uh, I'm sorry if I put you on the spot with a couple of questions. There. I mean, obviously, I understand there's there's some things that um, no, you can't no, talk no about that haven't been announced. But it's just great to get a retailer's perspective of principally the new Hornby range. And I have to ask, because in a way, um, it, it, it's been a little bit of um, uh, a white, um, not a white elephant, uh, uh, an elephant in the room, the steampunk range. What did you make of that? I know some people have have criticised it. Other people are quite excited by it. It seems to have very much polarised. Well, what's your take on that range? Yeah, I have seen a lot of different thoughts on that one, but it's something I found, you know, it's it's different, isn't it? It's I just thought it was quite exciting to see something that wacky. It's it, I would have never guessed that would be mm. in the range this year. Like, that was a total surprise to me. You know, it, personally, I, I like a bit of steampunk stuff. Like, mm. that aesthetic's quite interesting to me, so it's quite cool to see that coming through. Obviously, there is a big steampunk community out there. There's a lot of people scratch-building uh, items. Potentially, there's opportunities for this with the wargaming community as well and mm. other modelers like that. But the way I see it, really, is... You know, it's just an interesting bit of diversification here, and hopefully it, it might tempt people who are perhaps in these other, let's say, you know, for loss of a better word, geeky communities out there, you know, to, to potentially get into model railways as well, or as part of the hobby that they're already in. So I, I don't really see a problem with it, to be honest. And some of the prices for these steampunk items are, are fantastic, really. I mean, I, th I think the locos are around the £30, £40 pound mark. you got wagons for under... 20 15 quid something like that and you know they've they've tried to come out with you know a fairly comprehensive range because you've got all the buildings and the uh the figurines with all the uh the cool aesthetic on them as well yeah, and they've yeah. tried to build a you know a nice a nice bit of lore around it as well which i think is really important with something like this so yeah you know yeah. I've, i i don't see a problem with it really yeah because in some respects it's it's almost like it's not aimed principally at railway modelers but on people who they kind of go for the creative side and it, it's you know, the way I, I was looking at it was it's bringing potentially new people into the hobby who might not have otherwise come into the hobby and it, it's fostering that air of creativity you can kind of freestyle um, um, buildings you can freestyle locomotives and rolling stock which might actually appeal to um, a younger creative uh, kind of market yeah, absolutely yeah and i think it you know it, it's kind of promoting something which i don't see enough people say is promoting more railways as an art form really mm. because at the end of the day it is you know this people are creating miniature artworks here with them on the railways like no matter what you're building you're building something and it's created yeah. so you know i think the more different opportunities people have to to make an entryway into model railways as a hobby the better so i i think it's a, it's a good move personally mm. because it you know like like you say if it does get people from other communities or perhaps younger people on board mm. then what's the problem yeah because you know you never know they might end up transferring onto shall we say more traditional modern railways from there yeah very much and um you know in in some respects uh, i've just forgotten what i was gonna say so my i I'm, i've been doing dry january <laughs> And uh, because there was nothing to drink in the house, I thought, well, I'll do a dry February the 1st. I'll have a can of Magnus. It's the worst possible thing you can do after 
um, two <laughs> weeks of being teetotal because it just goes straight to your head and go, aha, we shall der derail your train of thought. Um, <laughs> a bit, um, it was something to do with the steampunk range. I, this makes me sound really unprofessional. I've completely lost my train of thought. Um, it was something to do with the steampunk range. Um, no, it's gone. <laughs> Never mind. Um, so look well, I at... saw you did that video with the, the creator, didn't you? The other oh, day Laurie well. Calvert. Um... Yes. He's a great yeah, guy. Yeah. And I think you, um, if you've been to any of the shows like Wally, um, Alexandra Palace, and indeed quite a few of the other ones as well, you may have actually met him. Um, his exhibition layout um, goes on the circuit really quite a lot. I think he said to me, he, he's, he's out something like 40 weekends a year uh, at exhibitions. Wow. Um, but, um, yeah, it was through that that he was actually approached by Hornby to um, kind of spearhead the design of this. And I think, you know, going back to you know the 1970s, there, there were items in the Hornby range, things like the Battle Space um, Turbo Car, um, you know, the giraffe car, the uh, I think it was a TNT car that exploded and then you put it back together and it was like a spring loaded mechanism. So Hornby has done these kind of out there majoring on the play value products yeah. before. And in some respects, maybe this is Hornby getting back to more of its roots of, of toys with play value. Definitely, definitely. You know, because back in the day, we all know about the, you know, the... Uh dinosaur train set and things like that obviously i don't oh gosh i, don't I remember we'll that return to... yeah exactly but I, I don't know if we'll see a return to that level of wackiness <laughs> shall we say but I, 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 it's just nice to see like a bit a bit more stuff that's out there as you say another one that always that caught my eye in the catalog was the uh, the beatles livery joro star which oh, yes you know that's it's it's it, I, I looked at it i was like hey that is, is, is that real? And we talked around the office, and it, it was real in 1999 for the re-release of the uh, uh, of the the flying uh, flying submarine, yellow submarine um, album. So it, it's you know that's something a, a little bit more different. So it's just interesting to see that coming through. And you know, it's it, with the the Corgi diecast range as well. That's something that you know they've really pushed on the the licensed properties in there. So you've got a lot of Beatles items in there. You've got Mr. Bean items coming through. You've got uh, James Bond, Only Fools and Horses, Dad's Army, all that kind of stuff. So, I think, like with the, the like we said about the Centenary range, and uh, even with the steampunk stuff, I guess it, it's it's playing into people's nostalgia as well, and and you know evoking stuff they might have had as a kid coming back through. So, mm. you know, there's a lot lot of really great items there, really. Yeah, very much, very much. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm conscious I, I've kept you talking far longer than I told you I would keep you talking. But look, it's been great. I, I, I could talk all night. I could talk all night. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Uh, don't worry, it, it, gives, it gives my it gives my mouth a rest because normally I, I just can't stop talking. But um, it's oh, I'm, I'm hearing Zoe shouting like how very true from the other room. Um, but yeah, it's just <laughs> it, it's great to get a, a retailer's perspective on these things um, because you know otherwise we're kind of out here in the bubble trying to trying to guess a lot of things. And I guess you guys have got a greater insight into what what's selling really well because you're seeing um, all of the orders. But I mean, now I suppose we're looking forward to, we've got the, is it the Oxford Rail product announcement is on, is it next Tuesday? And then we've got the next biggie is uh, 5th of February is the Backman release as well. So there's there's still quite a few releases to come. Um, I mean, do you think that other manufacturers are going to have to up their game now that they've seen what Hornby have done? Or do you think that they will perhaps view it as maybe a one-off and then back to business as usual next year. Do you think we're going to see any real surprises from other manufacturers? I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, obviously, with Hornby, you know, they've always had a fairly diverse range and other manufacturers kind of cater to different parts of the market a little bit. Um, I'll be interested to see what comes from Oxford Rail soon, obviously. Mm. Um not sure if obviously because it will be part of the diecast announcement as well so it'll be interesting to see if there's new toys coming through with that as well mm. um but yeah i'm not i'm not too sure to be honest with you on that one yeah no worries anyway look uh, it's been great to have you on thanks for uh, giving us a, a little chat and uh, hopefully we'll speak again soon and in the meantime if everybody wants to uh, 
head on over and check out some of the well not right immediately um, at the end of the live stream check, uh, <laughs> check out the uh, the Hattons uh, platform one and uh, the rest of the YouTube channel check out the videos over there and also as we said before if there are items in the, in the new Hornby 2020 range that are must-have items for you then don't forget that you can pre-order them from the Hattons website and they've got a page entirely div devoted to just the the Hornby 2020 announcement so it's the the one-stop play to kind of pick off what you really must must be uh, having and I think that there are definitely a few items in there that are selling fast so it's order them or uh, be disappointed but look, thank you very much Jack and um, hopefully speak to you again later oh, my pleasure thanks very much for having me and um, hopefully see you again soon okay look you take care have yourself a great evening you too have a good stream okay take care bye bye now Right, that was um, Jack Morgan from Hattons. It was great to uh, have him on to uh, give a retailer's perspective on the Hornby 2020 range. So um, I hope that was interesting to all you guys. Let's have a look at... Um, I've been been ignoring some of your co um, your um, comments whilst I've been on the phone. It's very difficult to concentrate to the phone call and read comments. So I'm just going to scroll back. Uh, what have we got going on? Um, yeah, I think the steampunk thing is something that you either either really get it or it's just not your thing. Um, it's like chalk and cheese in a way. Um, it's just one of those things. And I think it's, for me, it's a great opportunity for model railway manufacturers as a whole to remember that if they, they want um, the hobby to continue and to grow, they've got to, to cater for that toy end of the market. And, you know, it's a bit like when I reviewed the Hornby Paddington Junior train set. It's about bringing new people into the market. It's not aimed at kind of our end of the market. Um, but let's have a look uh, down some of the rest of the, um, the comments. Brockwell Lane, are diesel punks a thing? Apparently they are. It's, it's, it's you know, it's like um, Goth came out of New Romantic. New Romantic came as a, a kind of a backlash against punk. And punk, in a way, was a backlash against uh, like mods and rockers. So, you know, you get things that become a natural development, that become a reaction to. So, yes, diesel punk. Uh, the, the short of it is diesel punk is the thing. I think Mad Max, actually. I, I guess Mad Max is a, more of a diesel punk thing. Um, Litchfield Central. It's a Class 97 and Network Rail Class 37. It can be. Uh, class 97 is basically any departmental locomotive. So class 40s uh, were in the um, the class 97 designation at one point. I think they were part of the Mersey Rail Engineering Works in the late 80s. There were a number of class 40s were transferred into that and got numbered in the 97 series. There's some 25s got numbered in the 97 series as electric train heat X locomotives. Class 24 experiment, I think it was 97... Uh, I can't remember its number, but that and th there's been all sorts in the 9.7 range. Tim Davis, when is Backman going to tell us what's coming in 2020? I think it's the 5th of um, of February. A big hello to Cottesmore. I've got you in the room. Good to see you. I think I did see briefly New Junction here somewhere. Yeah, New Junction. Um, a big hello to you. Um, Let's have a look. New modern image found without being biased. What do you think of the Hornby Twenty Twenty? What's going to on nutrition? Yeah, I I saw this from a few people saying, oh well, there's not much in the way of modern image, um, but actually I've seen quite a bit of stuff there. Um, really like it, John. Both loads for me there, both past and 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 present. Yeah, I think at New Junction, you're absolutely right. Um, I think in some respects, uh, and maybe this is controversial, but as a modeler. Sometimes it's very hard to see so much stuff that you want because you think, oh, I'm going to have to pre-order. I'm going to have to pay a lot of money. And you can end up spending a huge amount of money. So if it's a much more subdued range, you know, it gives you that kind of year where you, you don't have to spend huge amounts of money. Uh, Marty McFly, do Hattons make their own models? Yet yeah, they've got a range. Andrew Barclay, P class, they've got a range of class 66s, high spec. I did a review of uh, that on my channel a little while ago. I've reviewed the P class and the Andrew Barclay as well. Um, also, Wagons, uh, they did a, a I think they still do, a series of, they did the Bilehack, Snowplows, Warwells, um, 
uh, railhead treatment train. I'm trying to think what else. There, there, there will be some other stuff, but I, I can't for the life of me think right now. Uh, Paul Shepard says, any thoughts on Mazak Rot and older locomotives? It seems to come and go in phases. Now, Hornby Double O in the very late 1930s um, had a problem with Mazak Rot. Um, and it was, they believe they may have traced it down to where you have to have a very precise mix with zinc mazak. It's an alloy, as the name suggests, it's got zinc, it's got mazak in it. But it's very intolerant of impurities, particularly lead. And when lead mixes in, then it causes this kind of crystalline effect and causes this instability in the metal. Now, where is the lead coming from, you may be asking? Well, actually, it's quite a simple explanation. When the ingots of metal, or just like blocks of metal come, they come in hessian sacks, or at least they certainly did back then. And these sacks were sealed with like a lead seal because lead is quite soft. They can squish it, melt it, and it like puts the seal on and says like, this bag contains X, Y, and Z. And what was they reckon was happening was that when this stuff was tipped into the pot to be melted and then gone into the injection molded uh, die cast machine, that lead tag, they were just chucking it in the mix. And actually that was the worst thing they could do. Hornby 00 got everything sorted. So actually Hornby 00 models from the like 1950s and 1960s are perfectly stable. They will not degenerate. And that's the thing about zinc mass. It is really perfectly stable as long as that mix was fine in the first place. But then there seems to have been um, out in China for a period, there have been factories that have kind of rediscovered why you don't put lead in the mix. And probably for the same reasons, you know, the, the seals off the sacks, binding wires, stuff like that is finding its way into the mix and it's causing the issue. So that's the thing about mazak rot is the locomotive has mazak rot. It, it, there's nothing you can do about it. But if it doesn't have the impurities, then... It ain't gonna. It ain't gonna rot. Um, uh, let's have a look. Um, I think actually uh, quite a few of these. Um, uh, sorry, Fat Wallet Boy Two Jack would Hornby accept special commissions from Hattons? Um, ha um, Hornby have done special commissions. Um, generally speaking, it's liveries. Uh, it's not whole new models, as far as I'm aware. They will do liveries, and they've done a lot with the National Railway Museum. Uh, and then back in the day as well, I remember at Mainline Class 9 Shunter, they did as a special commission from Hornby. Uh, I think it was 09016 or 09019. Um, and that was a Hornby commission. But as far as bespoke wagons, I don't believe that Hornby do that. But never say never, maybe. Yeah, you can watch me drink for a bit. Oh, chug, chug, chug. Uh, Mark Wilson. Can do something rather than Hornby next week, please? Yes, yeah, certainly. We'll be looking ahead to the Oxford Rail range release. Um, and also talking a little bit about other topics. I've got a few plans going on. Most notably, Weir Yard is currently... I say currently, it's not like it's like, whoosh, back to work, Les. Les has spent a couple of hours today doing the back scene up on Weir Yard. And this is being done from scratch with pastels and chalk. And it's an amazing job. I'm not showing you the pictures because the video, hopefully all going well, will be Friday's update video on Weir Yard. Um, so one to look out for and possibly be talking a little bit about that. Maybe even try and get Les on to talk about it because back scenes are one of those things which can make or break a layout. Now you can do them in a whole number of different ways. You can get photographic back scenes, printed back scenes. You can make your own back scene, either paint it, pastels, chalk, or just like plain back scenes where you just paint it in a, a, a neutral colour. So I've got a hanging nail. Ooh, I hate it when you get a hanging nail. Right. Um, hi to you, Tim Davis. Fat Wallet Boy 2. Hopefully others will. Oh, um, bish bash bosh. As, um, uh, I'm Shackleton. Ben Davis. Uh, uh, oh, you need to do a whole live with Hatton says it will be amazing. It's one of those things, maybe at some point um, Hattons will invite me onto, onto their stream. At the moment, the, uh, part of the problem is they do the Platform One live stream. I think it's on a Friday. And unfortunately, I work at my day job on a Friday. Um, and you know I do like 15-hour shifts. So unfortunately, I'm never around when they're doing their live stream, which is, is, is a shame. Uh, but uh, certainly, yeah, um, 
I'd love to do something, um, some some more stuff with with Hattons. Really would. Um, I love working with manufacturers and retailers alike. Um, I'm just enthusiastic for the hobby, and I think that you know that's you know, it's really important. We have a great hobby here, so um, yeah, I'm just happy to extol the virtues of everything in this hobby. Um, I'm probably well well behind on the comments, so do bear with me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the usual jokes about uh, Backman's long lead times. I am still waiting for a VEA van. And if you're thinking, well, it's only a couple of years since they announced that. No, they announced the VEA van in 2000, maybe even uh, 2001. Um, I remember it the first time round and it was announced. It appeared in their cabinets and then disappeared. Um um fat wallet boy too jenny's memory is better with alcohol i'll have to take your word for that i can't remember marty mcfly jenny looks hammered <laughs> it's because i've been doing dry january and then like a prat i picked up a can of cider because we had nothing else in the house at the time zoe has since been out and got cans of diet coke which is what i'll be moving on to but it hits you like a brick i have to say so i'm going to be doing a dry in fact actually it's penance for breaking dry january for this one drink and actually once you've been off it, it's, it's not that nice. I'm going to have a dry February the 1st and maybe even a dry February the 2nd. And you'll see where it goes to. Um, Andy, 1962. Yeah, uh, right with you there. Love the Beatles train. Got it on pre-order. Certainly, it does look a nice one. Um, I, I'm going to... Oh, I, I'm back at the bottom now. It's done a done a, a, a big uh, drop, a big jump. So uh, if I missed any comments, if they're, if they're genuine questions and stuff, just uh, do ask them again. I'm not, not ignoring you. But um, Reese O'Connor, what? Um, oh, I've, mi I've missed what, what you're replying to. I'm sorry. New Mills Model Railway, is Les still up there? Locked him up until done. Aha. No, he has gone home. Um, he went back to uh, meet his wife because uh, she's been away all weekend so um he had to go back and uh, he may be uh, he's probably dipped in and out uh but um uh, uh what's going on oh uh new mills mother it's Le oh sorry um les les is coming back tomorrow actually um so um hopefully get it maybe finished tomorrow and it, it it's gonna be great yeah don't forget smash the like button uh, i like transport absolutely um angus is i think uh, i'm presuming angus's trains has been asking about his website um over on youtube i guess so uh let me find a tab and i, I did promise i'd do it later i have I have to say so uh so let me bring up YouTube in the background. But um, let's have a look. Uh, Jamie Smith, what is your choice of beverage tonight, Jennifer? How's the cupboard monkey keeping to? The cupboard monkey is in the back room and she is just uh, taking it easy. Um, she's not feeling the greatest. So uh, let's have a look. Angus. So she's she's bearing up. So um, ah, Angus, you're doing quite well, actually. 133 subscribers. So... Um, just because I did promise that I would I would show it later on, so later has come. Angus's trains um, got some new videos up on there. I see. Uh, I am a subscriber, and um, certainly there's some interesting videos on here. Certainly, uh, trains running videos, uh, trains out in the mail. They look very much like HSTs. Those uh, uh, those trains and uh, model railway exhibitions. In fact, actually. Walker Waterworks Miniature Railway. I did watch that interesting video. So um, um, great to see new videos coming up and you're doing really well on the subscribe account. So anybody who hasn't checked out Angus's trains, do head on over and check him out on YouTube after the stream, of course. So um, quick plug for you there, Angus. Don't say it. Don't say I never do anything. Uh, Alan Reynolds, um, PVA J Cloth Alan says, hi, Jenny. Hi to you. And uh, I'm still using that PVA J cloth um, method. It's really good, actually, especially because you, know, you have to go out and buy plaster bandage. But actually, PVA you generally have some knocking about. Same with the J cloths. Right, that's spent. You know, I completely forgot about the cookies. Um, 
Mark Wilson says, are Backman US or UK based? Um, neither, actually. Um, their parent company, Kader K Industries, is based in Hong Kong. And they're owned by um, Kader Industries. Backman America have their own head offices. I'm not quite sure where in America they are. I'm sure somebody will, um, will put it up. Backman UK and Europe, I believe, is all controlled from... Um, uh, somewhere near Leicester. Um, actually, New Junction lives five minutes away, apparently. Um, but um, that's kind of like their their UK office. But they are actually uh, a Chinese company or a Hong Kong company. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, Brockwell Lane, interest. Do you think Batman are getting a lot of hate recently? And if so, do they deserve it? Um, I think, see, for a long time, probably about 10 years ago, I was almost exclusively a purchaser of um, Backman um, locomotives and rolling stock. I didn't buy a lot of Hornby. I felt that Hornby had lost their way. But now, uh, yep, New Junction. I knew you could. I can see the factory from. It's not really a factory. It's kind of a warehouse and R and D and some offices. There's, they don't make anything there, do they? Mm. I'm just soaking up the alcohol. But. Um, Certainly 10 years ago, Backman were very much on top. Now, one of the problems that I think a lot of people have said is about the price ranges. Now, it has to be said, the prices have risen across all manufacturers. And I guess that Backman have probably had it rough because they were the first to do it. And it's a bit like, I don't know if everybody remembers in the UK, there was this big phase where banks just shut all their high street branches. It's like... Oh, I wanted to go to the bank, but it's been turned into a trendy wine bar. And actually, that, that was um, an advert from, I think it was Nat West. And the thing was, Nat West were making a big thing about it, and they were one of the worst banks for closing down local branches. But, you know, everybody remembers them as boasting about reopening some. Um, but anywho, to get back at the... Meanwhile, back on the ranch, um, I think nowadays, Backman... The problem that they have is some of the prices do seem to be very expensive and they've come up against a resurgent Hornby, which is doing really well and riding high. And it's good to see. And also, I think there's also new manufacturers like Oxford Rail, uh, Cavalex, uh, Cura Scale have come on the market that they never had to contend with before. So they're getting competition from all angles and especially Oxford Rail has shown that that models don't have to be really, really expensive. Um, and, you know, Oxford Rail, they're not a charity. They are making money. And I think it's made people very sceptical. So do they deserve the criticism? Um, not entirely would be... Um, um, yeah, Brock Hall, they're absolutely right. Um, would not want to lose them. Um, I think I can see why people criticise Backman. I think some of it is unfounded. And, you know... I, I remember when people used to uh, criticise Hornby, when people used to criticise Daypol, and some of it was unfounded. And I think that um, it's easy to criticise Backman because of the prices, but the models are good. You don't tend to get any complete lemons from Backman. Um, and, you know, I do like Backman stuff. Um but, um, you know, I, I think maybe for me, the big thing with Backman is that they kind of haven't embraced the Internet, social media in particular, YouTube. And it's a, they're very old school. And I think that things have changed in terms of retail. You know, we've seen it on the high street and in model railways. There's a lot of promotion goes on with things like Facebook, Instagram uh, YouTube, and that's what you know. This, we're hanging out here. We're, there's, there's what 150, 160 people or something in the chat at the moment. It, it's a lovely community feel, and we're all chatting. It's a bit like we're all down the pub, kind of thing. Uh, only I, I'm now onto the um, onto the the coke. I, I'll hold that away from the microphone. <laughs> Always forget that, like straight into the microphone. Um, 
But yeah, actually, DH7 Kelly, big hi to you. Five plus year wait for a model after announcing it is unacceptable in the current market when the likes of Acura Scale and even Hornby mostly can get releases out in a year of announcements. Yeah, um, that's what I was kind of um, slowly circling the point, like like lint going down the plug hole. Um, essentially, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think my biggest criticism of Backman is not the price increase. I, I recognise that they're not a charity. I recognise that models are expensive to develop and to make. Um, although, you know, I think we'd all like lower prices, but, you know, hey, it's just the way it works. Um, but the long lead times, it almost at times feels like they bag a model and then sit on it. The VEA van, for one, um, is, um, it, it, it is something that, um, you know, it's a case in point. Announced initially, I think, 2000, 2001, and we're still waiting for it. Um, Ken Patterson, really great to um, to uh, see you in. It's great to see you. Good morning, Jennifer. Fun to start my day watching your work. I really need to try this live video presentation with the crew. You're amazing. Thank you very much. And I would love to be on your What's Neat This Week podcast. We, we need to try and get our schedules to align. I'd love to come and do that if you'd still have me on. Um, but um, yeah, it's uh, cause you're like one of the... Um, one of the big hitters in the hobby, but actually live streaming is where it's at because you get this great community feel. Um, you've got um, this this immediacy, and I do I do quite like it. Um, I must admit that I I don't work well scripted. Um, I I like to ad lib a lot, and um, I I have at most I have some very basic notes that I work from, and I guess you know maybe it's arrogant of me, but I I like the enthusiasm I have for the hobby to kind of carry me over. But yeah, I, I'd love to be on your show, Ken. Um, I, I, you've got my details through the Book of Face. Drop me a line. We'll, we'll try and sort something out. I know there's obviously time differences and stuff. And because of my work, um, Sundays, Mondays and Tuesdays are the days. I, I, don't, I don't know how far ahead or behind um, me or you are from each other. So it's, it's how they, they equate. I mean, at the moment, it's... It's 20 past eight in the evening in the UK. So I don't know how that, oh, on, on Monday, 20 past eight on Monday in the UK. So I don't know how that equates to, to where, where you guys are. But yeah, I'd love to be on, it really would. Um, Barry 120, I suspect Batman will be forced to both reduce prices and get their, their bottoms in gear with better marketing and lead times, the nature of competition. Yeah, quite possibly. Um, I, th I think long lead times, as Kelly has already alluded to, is you just can't do that. And I think what we've started to see is them get beaten to it. The class 121, 122 is a case in point. Daypol have already had their model out to market. And yet the Bankman website is still showing them developing for release that rail car. And I don't think that the market um, the, the market can, can sustain two rival manufacturers model of that thing. The Daypol model is reasonably priced. It's well specced up. In fact, it's one of the most highly specced um, non-sound DCC model I've seen in terms of lighting functions. Um, I think it's got five different lighting functions you can use on DCC, which is pretty impressive. So the Bankman model has to really pull something out of the hat to compete with that. And again, the Daypol model, you can pick that up for down to about, I think Hattons were doing it for 89 99 I've seen them at rails for around the same sort of price. What is ha what is Bankman going to bring to the market to compete with that? They can't do it. Um, uh, Mark Wilson, wow, Ken Patterson is on the chat. Absolutely love what's neat. It's an inspiration channel. Yeah, I've been a subscriber for a long time. I have to say, I don't tend to comment. I'm a bit naughty like that. I'm a lurker. But yeah, um, what's neat this week is certainly a big inspiration. So thank you, Ken, for, for doing that. Um, a great service to the hobby and really enjoy your work and uh, would love to be able to get on that as well. So I'm six hours ahead. So you record 8 to 9 p.m. on Saturday. So that would be 2 to 3 in the afternoon for me on a Saturday. We're going to have to work something out because I work Saturday. So my, my shift pattern is currently Wednesday to Saturday. I really do want to change that. Um, I never make any secrets that I would really love to work in the in uh, uh, a job that I enjoy. Um, but, you know, four days a week I have to go out and pay the mortgage and stuff like that. So we'll work something out. Um, we'll pick a day. That I, I'm trying to think. Actually, we might be able to do that um, uh, when I'm at Alexandra Palace 
um, later in the year. I'm doing a model show and might be able to do something uh, link up from Alexandra Palace. That might be something to do. So uh, we'll sort something out, Ken. But yeah, it would be an honour to be on your show. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Alan Reynolds. I thought Bankman just bought up companies like Seencraft, Mainline and others. I've seen the name of station ticket machines. Um, I'm not sure. Is Woodland Scenics a, a separate company? Um, I'm I'm wondering. The back of my mind, my my spidey senses, my train senses are tingling, and saying that what that Bankman distributes Woodland Scenics, but that Woodland Scenics are actually a separate company. I I I, I could be wrong on that. Um, Angus's trains. Yeah. Um, we we should sort something out. We need to sort something out. Um, it's really just a case of. Um, Again, scheduling thing. Um, uh, yeah, Ken Passing, you have to be on 2 to 3 a.m. your time. Oh, actually, 2 to 3 a.m. I might actually... Oh, sorry, is that morning? Um, 8 to 9... A ah, right. We might be able to do something. 2 to 3 a.m. We can possibly do something. Um, it basically means I have to go to bed very late and start work a little bit later in the morning. We can do that. We can do that. Um, Mark Wilson, Jenny, linking up with Ken Patterson is amazing. Jenny, throw a sickie, please. Uh, Tim's Trains, what actually is your job, Jenny? It's being bored stiff in transport and logistics for a large company I'm not going to give their name because I don't want to get into trouble because they'd like get a bit sniffy if they knew that I disliked them as much as they disliked me. She drives a stereo around the country. Mm, something like that. Tell them about your livery idea. My what? Your livery idea, the Jenny Rover. Oh, yeah. So, I could do... I, I need a wingman so I can stuff my face with cookies and still do a live stream. But, um... Um, the Cupboard Monkey reminds me that we've been toying with the idea of getting a wagon commissioned, or just delivery, for the Jenny Monday Club. Somehow, something that ties in. My preference would be to have a wagon that looks like a sort of like a pre pre grouping type wagon, or like 1930s coal wagon, um, that would have the a livery that alludes to jennifer monday club i don't know the, the the jenny monday um club coal um railwayman's coal association or something and then return empty to wear sidings something like that but i need to look into that um new junction asks are you doing a talk at ali pally again yes i am um as far as i'm aware yes um uh i like transport that would probably get H henny into trouble oh what what's uh, bish bish but oh combat bunny just ordered my monday club mug thank you very much um i hope you enjoy it um it, it, so certainly yeah uh jenny monday club, i don't actually have one to hand um there's probably the patter of sound of a cupboard monkey hurriedly going downstairs to find one but you don't have to yo don't don't go and get one uh was that better than seven Ah, D87 Kelly. Bankman took over most of the mainline range when Palatoy withdrew from the market and Kada decided they wanted to produce models themselves rather than producing for others, such as Replica. Yeah. Um, uh, if I've missed anybody's comments or questions, just um, um, do ask them again. Let's have a look. Russell Benton. Bankman changed five years ago when they started whacking the prices up and restricting supply. Up till then, they were great. Got lots of Batman models, but not in the last four, three to four years. I, I Actually, I found very much the same with me. I now buy almost exclusively Hornby, it has to be said, with just occasional Batman. Uh, New Mills Model Railway. Woodland Scenics are separate, I think. Batman UK are the distributors for UK and Europe. I thought it was something like that. Patrick, F oh, it's just jumped. Patrick Verlang, hi to you. Hope you, so, you and Joey are well. Uh, I'm okay, but... Um, but Zoe's not. Uh, Tim's trains could be Eddie Stobart then. Uh, no, definitely not Eddie Stobart. There's only two types of people. Excuse me. Those who have worked for Eddie Stobart and know it's not a good place to work, and those that don't yet know that. Um, I, I did actually briefly work for Eddie Stobart through an agent. They're probably not that bad. Um, I didn't have any problems when I, I briefly worked there as a temp. But 
Um, to be honest, it's not my cup of tea. But no, you're like way off the mark there with Eddie Stobart. DH is M. Kelly. Prices went up for a variety of reasons. One being Chinese law changes relating to wages. The other being restructuring of how business sectors calculated profit. Brian Mozza, Daypol. Um, yeah, basically, oh, we're talking about the wagon liveries. That is certainly who I'd be looking at, um, at going to. Angus's trains. What about the T-shirts? A uh, couple of monkeys looking into it. When she's well and not being run off her feet editing videos, that will get looked at. Uh, J94, that sounds cool. Yeah, it's certainly um, certainly something that, um, that I've been thinking of for a while. DHSM Kelly, back when manufacturers said distribution, a number of ranges. Yeah, I think um, Britain's like the, the toy soldiers and stuff. I've got like a... There we go. Um, I do hate my hair. It falls in weird patterns. Um, yeah, I think Britain's as well is one that they do. Um, Ham Shackleton, Daple do short runs of private livery, so a Jenny wagon is feasible. Um, yeah, Brown has a Daple for the wagon. Yeah, definitely. Angus is trained, so I use my mug with juice. Good man, good man, good for you. Um, they are, are very versatile, aren't they? But um, I'm glad that people are buying the mugs, actually. It, it, it's this warm, glowy feeling. And Which side is your heart on? I don't know, is it this side or this side? I don't know, I never... Yeah. On the left, so apparently, there we are, hand on heart. Yes, thank you very much. The warm, glowy feeling is your apparently, the warm, glowy feeling is actually my cider. Um, Patrick Furlong, Tim Strange, my dad has a load of model trucks of Eddie Stobart. There are a lot of people who collect Stobart stuff, hence the Eddie Stobart train uh, things. I think it was Hornby that produced them with a the class 66, which is a bit. Mm. Um. Um, bish bash bosh james pets uh hi to you um uh, uh let's have a look james pets good evening patrick Fung. hi jenny hope you're very well certainly am uh cover monkeys a bit yeah. ben davis i hope to get the the bankman br 12 ton planked ventilator van with plywood door br departmental rail stores and br vea van wide br rail freight distribution sector Yet yeah, both of those, I, 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 God knows what happened to my pre-order. I pre-ordered them in about 2000, 2001, when they were first announced, um, probably with Farmworth Model Center, which is, uh, alas, sadly, no more. Um, but yeah, likewise, they're the two that I want. J94, would you get the new Hornby Rocket when it comes out? Certainly would. Got it on pre-order with uh, Rails of Sheffield, actually. Um, so it's one of the ones that if you want the Hornby Rocket, do get it pre-ordered, otherwise you're going to be disappointed because they are selling quickly. So uh, we had Jack Morgan on earlier on uh, from Hattons. So you can pre-order through Hattons. Uh, if you do, tell him I sent you. <laughs> uh, they've got the full range there to pre-order. Ditto with Rails of Sheffield. You can uh, pre-order the full range with them. And once your pre-order is in, then generally what certainly what the, the big manufacturers um, manufacturers big retailers do they get allocated a certain number so they're told by the manufacturer like we will give you x number so they can sell pre-orders up to that x and effectively they will then guarantee that those people will get that model so even if it then subsequently sells out as long as you got in before then boom you're safe so it's just you know if it's a must-have item you've just got to get in there uh, unfortunately it's the way of things these days um, Joe Light Railway, hello, looking forward to the new Hornby locomotives plus train packs this year and the Rocket train pack is something I like to get as well as the new Terriers. Yeah, there's some interesting liveries on the Terriers as well. I do like that improved engine green. <laughs> it's not green. Um, I think it was Merton, which um, for those of you who don't know, the, the story behind that, I think it's Merton. Um, it's where the original Rovex factory was in London. So I presume there was a terrier named after that part of London because that's how the terrier namings went. You know, you had things like Stepney, Box Hill, Wadden, um, Earlswood, uh, just to name a few. And I'm assuming that Merton uh, was another one, excuse me, that um, uh, was named thus. Um, I like transport the T-shirts and delayed. Yeah, they're, they've not even got off the planning stage, unfortunately. Um Somerset Andy says, I haven't got a Backman model in the last year. Hornby, a much better value. I'm, I've gone that way. It, it's a complete role reversal, it has to say. Although, I must admit, I have just bought a Backman item, albeit in the sales. And I find that actually we're seeing a lot more Backman items in the sales. And that possibly says quite a lot. 
Um, <laughs> New Junction says, Cottesworth, don't the admins all get mugs for services rendered? You can have a gold-plated Rolls-Royce if you want. If you buy it. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. Cottesmore, appearances only, Richard. You need to get up here and do a Jenny Monday live stream. Certainly, that is absolutely correct. Uh, New Junction, uh, you need to get yourself up here. I have got a seat over here, uh, which I can possibly pull into shot. Yeah, there, I have a seat waiting for you. So um, it would be great to have you on. Um, I, I've been trying to engineer that for a little while now, but you always very carefully escape my clutches. Um, as you saw, we've had Jack Morgan on today on the phone line, so we can put callers on air, um, special guest callers on air. It's actually really hard on my hearing, um, just to put it out there, so I'm not just fielding calls. Plus, I'm not giving people my mobile number. Um, uh, ben Davis, the same. I pre-ordered the rocket from Rails of Sheffield too. Definitely. Um, also, don't forget to support your local retailer as well. Um, it's about your local model shops um, because they're the, the the first line of getting all the little bits when you, you, you need to. And, you know, without our support, uh, the hobby will only wither. So and it's one of the things, actually, and I did a big interview with Happens uh, quite a while back now, a few months ago, last year. And one of the things that um, I did say to them, and they were actually um, really um, keen on, is supporting local retailers themselves by distributing their own brand products through other retailers so that they get a slice of the pie. And I think that is very important. Uh, Andy Davidson, any thoughts on the Acura scale Deltic? Yeah, it's one of the things, the Deltic is a curious, curious model for me in, well, in model form because the Bankman Deltic um, is a super detailed one. I do have one. I've got 55020 Nimbus and um, I really wanted a Deltic until I got one. And then I was underwhelmed by the model. I think it's the way that, that's what, um, um, oh, what was the um, Australian presenter recent, recently died. Can't remember his name. Sorry, James, Clive James. That was the word that he coined underwhelmed. And I think the Bankman class 55 had me underwhelmed and I can't quite put my finger on why I am underwhelmed, uh, but I was. So I'm really looking forward to the Acura Scale Class 55 Delta. Um, I think it's definitely one that's on my radar. I'm really looking forward to see it. But strangely enough, the prototype Delta that Backman did, I thought that was a superb model. And even when you place the prototype Delta DP1 next to the production Delta model, I can't quite place it, but the, the Bankman uh, production Delta just doesn't enthuse me. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the Acura Scale Delta for that reason. D87 Kelly, N-Gage is probably too small a market for Hornby to risk. They did try N-Gage. They had little end with their uh, ready-to-plant buildings and structures. Uh, and I think they released a few N-Gage items. I'm sure that the Class 403, the Brighton Bell, turned up in the Arnold range was... was um, what they released it through, but I, like you said, they just didn't sell. Um, uh, they just didn't sell enough to be financially worthwhile. It's as simple as that. Um, Cottesmore New Junction isn't available for interviews without payment of fig rolls. I tried that. Um, I'll be honest with you, I can get you all the fig rolls you want. We've got a Heron Foods and a co op just down the road. I can, um, you can eat your own body weight in fig rolls if you want, if you come and be on the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hold. On. I'm being. I'm being told. Apparently, we can't. We can't allow people to have their own body weight of, of fig rolls. What was that? The tree. Oh, I'm reminded by the cupboard monkey that in our garden, um, we have a real fig tree, and it does fruit with figs. And I can't stand the things. So, if um, New Junction, if you want to come up oop north and uh, be on the live stream, you can fill your pockets with real figs if you want. Um, disgusting things. But yeah, we've got a real fig tree in the garden. Uh, yeah, DH is some Kelly. They did the Brighton Bell, which sold out in the first run, but didn't sell in the second run. And that's one of the things you have to um, bear in mind. And it's something I'll be watching with interest. The C-Class in the fully ornate SECR livery with the brass dome and everything. They've re-released that with a different running number on um, uh, in, in double O. And that sold out very quickly first time round and commanded a huge premium price, it has to be said. And the thing is that a lot of people went, oh, why don't they redo it? Why don't they redo it? Um, 
And for a long time, they resisted that. And I think what a lot of people forget is that you have to be certain, did it sell out because there's enough people who didn't get it who would buy it to justify another production run? So in the case of the C-Class, I happen to know, because Backman told me, they made 300 of them. So actually, it, it's more limited than most limited editions. Those 300 sold out. And what you don't necessarily know is the ones that were going on eBay and commanding prices. Of, uh, at one point, I saw them going for £550 each, which is ridiculous. But you don't know, could they have sold 310 and that was basically how many people wanted them was 310. They made 300. Therefore, they sold out and 10 people were desperate to get their own ones. So the prices went up until some of the 300 who did get them were prepared to sell them for stupid amounts of money to the 10 people who didn't. Or did 300 people buy them? And actually, there was like 500 or 1,000 people who, if they had been available, would have wanted to buy them. That's what you have to ask yourself. And that's the calculation. And with the, the Arnold Brighton Bell, I guess what they then found there with the second print run was that actually it was the first case. You know, make 300, 310 people want them creating this artificial demand, which gives the impression that there is, is demand for a second production run. Um, what we will see with the Backman C class is does that hold true with that? Will it sell out relatively quickly? Or will it hang around and get discounted? Uh, only time will tell. Um, J94, I have a pr have the prototype Delta, Delta, uh, the prototype Daypole static Delta. It came out nice when I finished it. Yeah, and um, they've done a plastic model since the... It was originally part of the Kitmaster range. Uh, I think it was 1960s that came out. So it's quite an old model, but it builds up into a nice kit. And actually, some of those Daypole kits are quite a pleasing build. I do like the um, the ex Lancashire and Yorkshire pug. Uh, I like transport. There are many reasons for price rises. Chinese labour goes up, detail labs go up, research is more in-depth. Yeah, totally true. And I think as well, we're getting to prototypes which didn't necessarily survive. Um, photographs are harder to come by, so that does entail more research. Uh, Dr... AL60103, Engage Brighton Bell was rerun by Arnold Hornby a few months ago, so not sure it was too bad a seller. Second hands were going for £350, new price was less than £200. Yeah, certainly. I, will Hornby dip their toe in the Engage market again? I think they will at some point. Um, I think maybe some of the range, if it still exists, will be dusted off and get another release. Um... But um, I don't know, the little end range I thought was great because it was like an N-gauge version of the double O scale Dale range. And I thought it was a great range. So it would be nice to see some of that, I guess, reappear. Mark Wilson, TT gauge is really ideal. It should have been progressed by the main suppliers. The reason TT failed, I guess, was that N-gauge killed it. It's as simple as that. It just didn't offer the advantage that N-gauge did at the time. And it just, it kind of just fell between the cracks, literally. Uh, Joe Light Railway, are you going to take your, oh, excuse me, are you going to take your War of the World model railway to to exhibitions during this year? Excuse me, um, burps, gas, gas, Diet Coke, drink of choice. Yes, we are. It's going to Alexandra Palace, and um, uh, basically, if you want to see War of the Worlds that we built for Channel 5's Great Model Railway Challenge, then you can get a look of that. You can cop a look of that. At Alexandra Palace. I'll be also there uh, being, being interviewed, I believe, on both days as well. So you'll be able to see me and um, uh, I think there's five of us going. Um, well, there'll be four, four on Sunday, five of us on Saturday. Simon A.C. Martin can only make the Saturday, I believe. But then there will also be, for all weekend, there will be myself, Melanie Lewis, um, Les Cliff is also going to be there. And Les Cliff is, is bringing some of the prints and frame prints from his shop um, to give all you Shazanesh a good chance of buying the amazing stuff that he's got in his uh, art shop. So um, if you're looking for a really good picture for the wall, you'll be able to get them from him there. And uh, Stefan Nielsen as well is uh, hopefully making the pilgrimage over from Sweden. And um, we'll be uh, putting the band back together. So that'll be five of us, the core five of the team on the Saturday and four the other days. 
Um, I like transport. Angus is trains. I hope to do some soon. Uh, I presume that's a, a reply to something else. D87 Kelly, cost of models in Chinese factories are largely dependent upon how many small bits being added and complexity of delivery. Yeah, and this was pretty much um, the whole point behind Design Clever. I know Hornby um, made a bit of a, a foot, in, foot in mouth hash of that the first time round. But actually, the fundamental behind Design Clever was sound. The whole idea is if you can make the model cheaper and not compromise the detail and finish, you're onto a winner because you're cutting down the time it takes to make and the amount of personnel you need. And that is important. Um, so actually, some of the newer models, and you'll have seen this when I've been doing the reviews, um, I actually do like when you know you have detail that is cleverly done to minimise number of parts. And I think that is really great. Um, um, I'm missing stuff. Stuff's just dis I'm, I'm gonna. Oh, I just can't keep up with the comments. You type. You guys. You type too fast. Uh, the Growler Blackwood N gauge layout. Agree. N gauge is smaller market share compared to a double O, but still has many thousands of modelers who use it as their gauge of choice. Yeah, it's certainly it's a viable market. Um, but I guess N gauge is. I think I saw a figure somewhere that where, that that uh, was like N gauge is like a quarter of the sales of double O. Um, so it's still significant, but. It's nowhere near as big. Um, D87 Kelly, paint records and other historical documents exist for livery detail often. To an extent, yes, but also they can be quite vague. Um, it's like, you know, it's like uh, it's like um, um, witches around the cauldron, like a dash of Prussian blue, a smidgen of white lead. And they did vary depending on how these paints were mixed. They tended to be mixed in batches at the depots when the, the locomotives and the stock was painted and so the actual final colour and hue could vary enormously um, and also you know mistakes do creep in um, the Bankman E1 later J72 the northeastern railway green is actually not accurate to pre-grouping and there's admitted to me by the Bankman rep when he was showing me around the Bankman stand at Ali Pali earlier last year um, he said they they had a photograph they assumed that it was northeastern railway green and only after they'd advertised it and the pre-orders were flooding in did they find out that actually the locomotive was in photographic gray and actually there's no evidence that an e1 later j72 ever actually got northeastern railway green so i said to him so are you going to be changing that model then and he said well no, because actually it's had more pre-orders than any of the others. So he said, people want it, so we'll make it. Which, you know, people were not... Uh, you know, we were saying that, that um, Batman does deserve criticism, but there are certain areas like that that they're prepared to put in production, the model that people want, even if they know it's not the right livery, because, like, hey, people like, like fancy green locomotives. Um, I like transport. Uh, uh uh, very funny, Adams Railway. Oh, have I missed a comment? I, I probably have actually. Big Sid, Z gauge is the way to go if you're short sighted. I, I I struggle with double O at times. Uh, Combat Bunny, remember to hit that like button. Oh well, uh, you are too kind. You are a star. Um, James Moody, have Hornby confirmed exactly what is in each APT pack yet? I haven't seen any further information. Um, essentially. Um, the best place to go is to have a look at the listing on the Hornby website and also check out Hatton's as well or Rails of Sheffield because they tend to be pretty good with uh, the extra information that's in there that may not necessarily be readily available. Um, Ham Shackleton. I used to have N-Gage when it first kicked off in about 1965 with Lima, Minitrix and Fleischmann stock. A bit of Graham Farish too. Um, Mark Wilson with Daypol, I think that O-Gage is coming more available and popular. What do you think, Jenny? Very much. I think the thing about O-Gage is that Daypol brought to the market a really good product. It's well detailed. It looks the part. It feels the part. Um, and it runs the part. But at a really good price. And before Daypol brought out their ready-to-run range, you were looking at five, six, seven hundred pounds, even for the most basic of locomotives. And in a lot of instances, these were brass hand-built items which is why they were expensive but then you were expected to somehow paint these things so more expense and more scope to make a complete hash of it which when you're talking about like a seven eight hundred pound model you really don't want to make a hash of it 
Daypol blew all that out of the water by bringing ready to run O-gauge to the market at a really affordable price. And actually it's a range which I really do love. So I'd um, also like to send out a big, big thank you to Daypol for sending over the review sample of the O-gauge Sentinel. And it just goes to show how much thought has gone into these models that even things like DCC fitting it, um, you know, they're leading the way and making these things very user friendly and that has to be applauded. And yes, I think we're going to see more O gauge models um, uh, layouts because it's more accessible and more affordable. And one of the videos that on my channel was the seven hour um, yes, that's right. Start to finish. Seven hour build of an O gauge layout. Um, so you can check that out on my channel. And, um, you know, these things, it, it didn't cost an awful lot of money. And uh, you can get a good effect. You can get a good model railway that you can run and use with O gauge. And one of the best things about O gauge as well is you don't need a lot of stock. Um, whereas with double O, I find myself buying more and more and more. With O gauge, it's a lot easier to restrain uh, what you're actually uh, buying, I find, um, and be more, more focused. You know, I've got, um, I've actually got four locomotives, which is probably three more than I need, um, but I've only got five items of rolling stock, and actually, I don't feel like I'm short on rolling stock. What I actually feel like is I've got too many locomotives. Um, Brockwell Lane says, yeah, we don't hear much from Daple on YouTube. Um, Daypole do send out um, samples for review to magazines uh, that put them on their uh, YouTube offerings. I know Hornby Magazine, big up to New Junction. God, his ear, if he's listening, his ears just pricked up there. Hornby uh, Magazine do have a great YouTube channel, so you can find an awful lot of stuff on there as well. I believe that they did a review of the O-Gage Sentinel as well. I think you had the BR Black liveried version, if I remember correctly. Um, so there are sources, uh, and I guess Daypol, rather than having their own in-house channel, um, which can often come across very QVC when a company does its own kind of social media stuff, they prefer to get, um, uh, yeah, New Junction, really handsome. Yeah, with the beard you can trust. You're like, you're like the, the fourth member of ZZ Top, definitely. Um, but certainly, um... Uh, I, th I think the way that Daple, they've got such faith in the product that they send out review samples and know that the, the actual, the product has the quality that it will speak for itself. And I guess a review from a third party site, from a third party YouTuber like myself, it's worth a lot more because it, it is genuine rather than like, oh yeah, so, so tell... So tell me, Bob, what about this new product we've got in our range? Yes, yes, it's it's uh, you know it sucks whilst it cuts. Um, you know, it's it's like that that bit from Wayne's World was what I was trying to get at. But yeah, um, um, Mark Wilson. Only problem with O gauge coaches is they are two hundred and fifty a piece. Yeah, but you don't need many of them. When you th you add up how much you'd spend on double O coaches versus maybe having two, one or two O gauge coaches, actually. It's not too bad. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, Ham Shackleton. Uh, I've got a GT3 on order, but as there was only one, the photos are uh, IK, IKN? Uh, okay. or, no, in black and white. Does it really matter what livery it is in? I have seen photos of GT3 actually in colour. It was sort of like a, 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 like a fawn brown colour. Um, Russell Benton. A look at Daypole would be great. Their 68 is fantastic model. Maybe we'll have a look at, at 21 as it's my region. Um, yeah, I believe that um, I've been promised um, a sample to review of, I don't know whether it's the Class 21 or the very similar Class 29. They're similar because the Class 29 was rebuilt. I think it was 10 of them were rebuilt from Class 21 because the 21 was actually a complete flop. Um, had huge issues with its MAN engines that were built under licence by the North British Locomotive Company. And basically they made a hash of it and they were deeply unreliable. In a, an attempt to improve the reliability, uh, 10 of the class were re-engined and reworked uh, and fitted with... Oh, somebody's going to jump in and tell me, was it English Electric or Brush or something like that? Um uh, different, uh, no, Paxman, Paxman, that was it. Um, they were redone at uh, Paxman at Colchester 
and I, there was a few other little bits and pieces tweaked with them um and um the class 29 i think actually looks prettier but that's probably because the livery application have got two-tone green or rail blue um both great liveries in my view the 21 was plain green and i think there's one example can't remember the exact number got rail blue um but yeah mark wilson actually you'd be surprised how many obscure locomotive classes there were on br um if you've never heard of the class 21 then you probably never heard of uh class 16 which helgen do a model of um class 23 again helgen did a model of them known as baby deltics um it's all manner of stuff class 74s they are it's probably one you're not familiar with as well built uh, rebuilding um, the redundant Class 71s into an electro diesel using a Paxman, is it Paxman Ventura power unit, something like that. Um, yeah, I, I think the Class 20, Russell Benton, I think the Class 29s actually had an acceptable um, availability. The, the rebuild did sort a lot of the problems out, and the Class 29 were average reliability the problem that they had was that they were a non-standard class of um there was just 10 of them and at the time british rail slimming down closing lines less and less need for stuff and um uh basically a non-standard fleet was a non-starter so they were just like psh, gone as non-standard the class 30s were rebuilt in a similar manner to the class 31s engine change of engine the original Merleys power unit was not suited to a rail application. There was nothing wrong with the engine, I believe. It was a marine engine. And the engines that were taken out of them were sold on for further use in stuff like uh, fishing boats, standby generators, and they were very successful at that. Um, but that re-engining program was far more successful, as you well know, because all the 31 survive. D827 Kelly. The Paxman engines in the 29 were equally unreliable, but the problem was more that they didn't change the generators and they kept ca failing or catching fire. Oh, interesting. I thought that the 29s were much more reliable. J94. I know Helgen made a class 17. Indeed, they do. Um, Helgen are the kings of the esoteric examples of, of long gone and long forgotten locomotives. So Helgen do models of the class 5, class 7, the class 14, 15, 16, 17... 21, 23, 26 and 27 are that probably more mainstream models. The 28, the 29 is forthcoming. Um, what else do they do? They, they did a 35. Um, bish, bash, bosh. Uh, they did a 58. And what else did Helgen do? 76 and 77 as well were, were Helgen. So they've got quite a range. Oh, and DP2 as well, which I believe it was... Uh, um what's that N mark wilson today on twitter it was announced they were thinking of making a new class 22 when you say they um i take it not in um um oh uh as in like the i think yeah the, the baby deltic is being recreated so why not a class 22 the one that got away there was one preserved unfortunately in between it being bought by the preservation group and being picked up british rail staff cut it up um and there was a bit of hoo-ha over it and british rail management was so embarrassed by this cock up um they um gifted um for exactly the same purchase price a class 42 uh, a warship plus a whole bunch of spares the warship was fully operational and even though the warship would technically be worth more money so would be sold for a higher price than the class 22 they because he gave it plus all the spares for the same price that the group had paid for the 22. Um, I believe that was the story. Um, let's have a look. Uh, 48, yeah, there was a 48, yeah. Class 48 was a class 47 with a different engine. Um, yeah, the Delta engine did start out as a marine engine for fast motor torpedo boats, I believe, in the Second World War. Um, but unlike the engine the merley's engine in the class 30 it seemed much better suited to its um uh, railway application mark wilson class 35 was a high mech um yeah uh, class 35 high mech um well referred to as a high mech but it's actually class 35 
Um, Helgen are bringing out one uh, with a tops number on. Now, you may be thinking they never got a tops number, but I believe in preservation one did get repainted. I think it was Dutch livery with a tops number. So, um, to be honest, I'm in there. I, I do have a thing for locomotives with a tops number. Now, I'm going to have some more cookie because, um, well, I've been talking to you guys and I haven't had a chance to stuff my face. So, talk amongst yourselves in the chat room. Mmm. Yeah, D827 Kelly. That's what I was thinking for a moment. I thought, they probably kept that quiet. The Class 22 is actually one of my favourite model locomotives. I do have a Daypole Class 22, and it is amazing. An amazing model. I have to say, it's one of my favourites in my collection. Um, the only gripe I have with it is the couplings. Has a weird non-standard non-NEM pocket coupling on it, which one of mine's broken, can't get spares for it, really, really annoying. But in terms of smoothness, reliability, the Class 22 was an amazing loco in model form, so I can well recommend the Daypole 22. Uh, Somerset Andy, was ZZ Top, the only one that didn't have a beard was the drummer and his name was Frank Beard. Cool or what? Yeah, I knew that fact as well. I've... I have actually seen ZZ Top play live. Uh, I saw them at uh, the Big Top at Liverpool um, quite a few years ago now. It must be 15, 16, maybe even 17 years ago. And actually, if you get a chance to go and see ZZ Top play live, they are really good live. And there's a lot of groups. I, I, for those people who are going to supposed to be a chain channel, um, I'll just say this. Some groups are amazing on the album, but rubbish live. Some groups are amazing live, but rubbish on the album. ZZ Top are amazing live and amazing on the album. You know, they, they really are, are good entertainers. Mark Wilson, was there a Class 51? Not as far as I know. There was a Class 52, a Class 50, and there was a Class 53. Um, quite an unusual loco. There was only one. It was a prototype that I think became... The, uh, what became the Class 50? Was it the 50? No, the DP2 is what became the 50. I think the Class 53, was that what became the, the design for the Class 56? Oh, there will be a Class 69. I thought they were avoiding that one because, um, because perverts. Hmm. <laughs> 57305 uh, Northern Princess says, Bye Jenny, off to watch the new episode of Silent Witness. Uh, it's been great to have your company. Uh, hopefully you come back watch the rest of the stream on Catch Up and um, hopefully see you next week. Hmm. Stuart Muir, the Class 29 was refitted with a Paxman Ventura engine, which I believe is basically an earlier version of the Paxman Valenta, which is fitted to the HSTs. Yeah, I knew it was, I knew it was Paxman Ventura. See, I did. I did guess correctly. I don't know. Guess, guess. Did I say guess? No, I meant. Um, no, I, I just seem to have this this depository of random facts. Hmm. Uh, Daryl Hearn. I see they got the the pre pretend low and early prototype HST coach. It's also the Phoenix class ninety ones at Leicester the uh, other day. Um. I, I must admit the the modern stuff is just like with me um i've tried to get interest in it but it, it's i struggle um mark wilson do you still have any chocolate or biscuits left over from christmas <laughs> no um class 53 is falcon yeah of which actually helgen do do a model of and yeah you're right there were deliberate gaps left in the tops numbers because they were largely set up to follow the power band that they had previously so type ones became and it was class, was it class 14 technically a type 1 or was it classed as a shunter? It was kind of a hybrid between the two. But up to and including class 20 as type 1. 21 to, uh, do, 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 um, to 29, was that type 2? Um, or actually, is, is, is it class 31 a type 3? I'm not sure. The type, the type classification, I just never really got. Um, especially when people try and say, that, oh, it's a type 6 or a type 7. It's like, no, it isn't. It never existed. Stop it. Behave yourself. Um, the Don Juan King Fox Junction is the just plug lighting any good. Is that the stuff from Hornby? Um, I guess it probably is OK. Um, do, do what it says it's going to do. I've never tried it. 
Um, Mark Stanway's Class 22 in the green looks amazing, but rails had sold out. They had them at 79. Uh, the Class 22 is a great loco. If you can get your hands on a Class 22, one of the day pole ones, it really is a great model. And it'll, it will pull and pull and pull. And um, I have no qualms with mine. Other than that, the my only gripe would be the couplings. But apart from that, it's been absolutely fine. Um, Daryl Hearn, just diesel. I think Jamie Smith, though, not seen any mock-ups of it. Oh, is it... Um, Oh, the Class 69, I think they're talking about. 69, dudes! Uh, I like transport, James. I don't know. The 56 body would be hard to fit a pantograph to. I'm sure that they'll figure out a way. I mean, you've got to remember that. Um, I think the original Class 88 was supposed to be a 58, but electric version, that would have had a pantograph. Um... Yeah, some Kelly. Kestrel was very powerful and went to the USSR. Um, yeah, there was rumours it still existed, but nobody's really verified it. Mm. Mark Wilson, will all the Rail Riders team get back together? No. Um, five of us, but not the sixth. Um, a lot of backstory. Covered it before, not going to really go into it again. But yeah, the five of us um, who will be at Alexandra Palace all get on great, always did get on great and remain getting on great. So it'd be a pleasure to um, to be all back together again. The sixth member of the team, never, ever again. Um, Daryl Hearn. Yeah, and Cash, oh, sorry, I've already read that out. Um, Gonads1259. Your name always causes me to chuckle. The, the inner schoolgirl in me is just like, <laughs> you said Gonads. Um, great to have you aboard. Um, great to have all of you aboard, actually. Um, Kelly, 33 caused a Type 3 classification to be made. Right. Um, uh, Woodland Scenics, the dumb one. Uh, but what are we talking about? Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, plug in life from Woodland Scenics. Yeah, not familiar with it. Warrington Trainspotter says, have you ever pre-ordered a loco? Really excited for it only to be disappointed when it arrived. Yep, Class 55 from Backman, 55020 Nimbus. Um, like I said before, the model just completely underwhelmed me. And I guess as well, the other thing as well, um, the Helgen Class 14. Um, I got in on the first batch and in all honesty... The disappointment I've had with that is unreliable running. It keeps locking up. And the reason it keeps locking up is because the amount of sideways play on the middle axle keeps making it hit and catch the steps. And just like, bang, the whole loco comes to a grinding halt and overloads whatever chip you put in it. So I need to sort that out. Um, J. Paul Anderson. Jenny, have you seen 1917 yet? Story is somewhat comparable to Gallipoli with Mel Gibson, but the picture is particularly beautifully shot. Yeah, shot to look like one shot from start to finish. Uh, in reality, it is several takes, but um, basically... Um, let me just... Uh, but um, essentially, one of the, the, the problems was what were we talking oh my my memory is just like fading in and out so i just got distracted by something on the uh on the cameras um yeah it, it's shot to look like it's all one t one scene from start to finish but actually they use a few camera tricks but certainly they had like seven minute takes sort of thing james moody kestrel did survive to the 80s but has been scrapped uh although the kerosene castle did manage to survive that's another early prototype type loco which had a miraculous escape and is back in the UK. J. Paul Anderson, yes, absolutely right. I like transport. The Class 88 is a bi-mode Class 68, except it was built that way, not converted. Oh, right. I thought the original Class 88 was, um, the plan for that was when the Class 58 was built the, eight, built, the 88 was a design which was basically an electric version of the Class 58. Uh, Mark Wilson, yes, there was a Class 20 just up in a, a James Bond film. It filmed at the Neen Valley Railway. D827 Kelly, as there was nothing else in that range, as the Type 2s were much less powerful and the Type 4s were much more powerful and heavy. Um, well, what about um, surely the Class 37 and the 35 also fall into the Type 3 range? I thought a 37 is technically a Type 3. 
Um, oh, right. So the, the one in gold, that was it. Something like 20042. Or was it the other one? 2148 or something. Uh, see you later, Angus's Trains. It's been great to have you in the stream. And uh, hopefully um, catch, you, um, catch you next time. Really good to have you in. And also, everybody... Um, if you want to go and check out Angus's trains uh, over on YouTube, I did promise him a plug. So there's another quick plug again. Whole variety of videos and um, uh, some great content there showing the uh, the railways of uh, Australia running, plus uh, model shows and some really good um, eye level viewing shots of trains running on uh, on his layout. Um. Mark Wilson, class 32, 34, 36, 38. Right, class 38 was going to be um, something to do with the class 37. Um, I think it was the re-engined class 37s. Um, uh, were, what became the 37 9s was supposed to be the um, class 38s, but were never numbered as, some, as such. Class 34 was originally what the Slim Jims were going to be. The Class 33s that had narrow bodies to fit through the Hastings and Battle Line tunnels. Uh, was it Tunbridge? Somewhere like that. And they were originally going to be Class 34s, but actually in the end just became Class 33s. Uh, never was the 32 as far as I, uh, I know. Oh, gosh, yeah, I've been busy. Um, going down to 12.59, what do you think of the Hornby Lord Nelson TTS model, Jen? Seen it available at sub 140, which seems a bit of a bargain. Certainly is. I've seen the same bargain and bought it. It arrived today. Look out for that. That's hopefully going to be our Saturday box opening and review. And um, I'll give you a hint. I am not disappointed. That is actually a great model at a great price. Available um, currently from Rails of Sheffield is where I got mine. Um, so do look around, might find it elsewhere, uh, but certainly Rails of Sheffield, I think it was £139.50. So um, a, a big thumbs up for me for that model. Joe Light Railway, can't wait for the exhibition in March as it is my birthday month. I'm, get, I'm thinking of getting an O-Gage Dapple Class 8 and BR Green. The Daypole models are superb in O-Gage. I can't recommend them more highly. I do actually want a Class 8 for my collection. I just need to get round to it. Uh, D87 Kelly, everyone, the first class 60 was being considered. They considered a re engine class 37 instead, which would have been a class 38, yeah. Um, uh, Mark Wilson, no, the class 40 in the Great Train Robbery doesn't survive. It was literally cut even when it was still hot from being withdrawn. The engine, I think the edict was don't burn yourself on the engine oil when you cut it up. Um, fell prototype from KR Mods. Yeah, I heard about that. I jokingly said. To the rep from Helgen when I was at Warley. So when are you going to do the fell? And he went, it's just been announced. Somebody else is doing it. So I felt like a bit of a wally. Dipper Town Junction, night to you. It's been great to have you along. Hopefully see you again next week. Um, um TPO carriages, apparently one of the TPO carriages has survived and been supportive. Um, oh, good man, I like transport. Um, just uh, pimping out there, the Angus's train show. I'll just go and take a look after the stream if you, if you want. Um, great kid. And um, got some interesting videos on there showing Australian uh, locomotive stuff that, um, running on the main line, preserved lines, and uh, also on his own, own layout, and it shows. Um... Uh, Somerset Andy, got to go now, Jenny. Thanks for another good live stream. The class 47 will post it to you on Thursday. Oh, well, look, thank you very, very much. That is amazingly generous of you. I, I really look forward to that. And uh, just thanks again. Um, I I'm really touched that you'd send me that. So thank you. D87 Kelly, 18,000 is at Didcot and likely will never leave due to modifications made in Russia. The electrification in Didcot has effectively sealed it in. Hmm. New Durham Junction Model Railway. I've just pre-ordered the Colas Class 60 uh, from the Hornby range. There's definitely, I think somebody said before, like, is it like a bit light on modern image? But actually, there's a lot of good modern image on there if you're into that sort of thing. Hmm. Uh, DH7 Kelly, the Class 35 hadn't been introduced when the 35 was being designed. Ah, right. The 37 only just designed around the time the 33 is right. I'm with you. Daryl Hearn says anything that goes to another country gets modded and reworked. To be honest, if they stay here over their lifespan, they get modded and reworked. 
Um, you know, hence 37 fours. They weren't built like that. 37 sevens, um, 37 nines. Yeah, the 66s, you've basically got three distinct different levels. The Hatton's model is the definitive model. Now, I did do a full review of that model uh, just before Christmas on this channel, and it is perfect. I couldn't really find anything much of fault to it. Um, that, the, if, if you want the perfect 66, where there is nothing you can fault with it particularly, um, and you know everything is just right, and you've got the money to spend, then the Hatton's Class 66 is the one for you. If you're on a really tight budget and you just want a model that you know you want to um, get out on your layout and run it, you're not too bothered about all your fiddly detail. You want something that just like you know looks all right. The Hornby one is amazing value for money, and the Backman one sort of sits between the two, um, middle middle of the range on price, middle of the range in terms of detail. It's better than the Hornby, not as good as the Hatton's one. So you pay your money, you take your choice. Mark Wilson, how many cookies are left? I don't forget to pass one to Les in the attic. I have not got Les trapped in the attic. He is coming back tomorrow at about six, though. Um, I'm on my second, and there's three more in the bag. Um, Otis JB, Jenny, hello, by the way. Just wondering whether you would be interested in reviewing a Sterling single. They're all sold out, I have to say. And um, I did toy with getting one, but at the time it was very, very expensive, it has to be said. Um, and now they're sold out. Um, probably not. It's one that if I saw one at the right price, I might consider it. But at the money moment, money is quite tight because I'm buying loads of stuff. Um, but um, I'll wait and see if, if the National Railway Museum brings out another version. I might consider jumping in on that one. Um, but it was just it was produced pretty much to pre-orders. Um, you could it, you know, didn't hang around. D8 to the 7 Kelly, uh, 18,000 is a very sorry state to, yeah, all of its innards are gone because it was just used as a, a test weight, I think, for a while. So it's like a big concrete block in there. Joe Light Railway, the Chinna Railway bringing in Class 55 for the Diesel Gala in March. What do you think about that? Um, I like the Class 55s. They're always a good draw. So, yeah, good, good on it. Ken Patterson, Jenny, I'm going to bring my wife Michelle in the studio in two minutes so she can meet you. Oh, well, thank you very much. I, I look forward to meeting her. Leslie Dickinson, you're right. D8, um, 87 Kelly, as in 1963, they all froze up and gave steam locomotives a slight reprieve till after the big freeze. Um, yeah, there's been um, a, a few instances when basically steam locomotives got a reprieve. Um, railway lines too, Settle and Carlisle. The BR tried to make a case for closing the Settle and Carlisle. And they did this by diverting all the traffic off. And then actually... Um, they found they needed it. Um, all they actually succeeded in doing is proving that they needed the Settle and Carlisle line and they didn't, they shouldn't close it. Um, Mark Wilson, the Hornby Class 56 Floyd is a bit of an oddity. Better off doing a DC rail version. Yeah, I wondered about that 56 Floyd. Um, but certainly I think Hornby have taken a gamble on a lot of these oddball liveries and stuff. And, you know, things like Stevenson's Rocket, for, for, for crying out loud. It's really, really, um, you know, I think they've taken a chance and it's paid off for a lot of these things. The Hush Hush as well, the W1. I think that's going to be not just a good seller, at least initially, but I think it's also going to be a, a steady seller for Hornby. And I think that that is probably a really good genius thing. Uh, Andy, 1962. Oh, Colditz reference. Les is building a glider in the attic. Um, uh, I like transport, says Jenny. Just put a cookie through the camera screen. So if you reach through, there we are. Mmm, cookies. Mm. Cookie monster. Can't really do cookie monster because you end up wasting all the cookie. Um... <laughs> Um, Kelly, the 24th of Hazel. Yeah, I have seen that. Some um, steam locos being used for steam preheating and just sort of pushed around, looking in a very sorry state. Um, yes, Mark Wilson, absolutely right. What's neat this week, Ken Patterson uh, is uh, in the room. So um, it's always a great honour to uh, have um, such a, um, a, 
a high standing figure within the um, the model rail community dip on into the monday club live stream so a big hello to ken and uh, I, th I think he's just uh, getting uh, getting uh, michelle I, I, I think that's his his, his uh, other half into the uh, to to say hello but um so i think he'll be back in a moment um Swindon 90... Oh, sorry. Look above before it disappears off the screen. Jamie Smith, they better to order the APT or do you think they will be plentiful from Hornby? I would say if it's a must-have item, you really do need to put an, a pre-order in. Um, uh, I, I think... I think they will hang around, but I can't guarantee on that. And so, essentially, if... You know, if you will, if you know you will be disappointed if you don't get one, then quite simply you need to order it. Uh, Swindon, 1969. I learned the dangers of browsing Hatton's and Rails late at night. Hold on, it's just. Uh... Oh, Ken Patterson's back in the room. Michelle thinks you're great. Well, thank you very much, Michelle. <laughs> I feel a bit lost for words. I like it when people like me. Um. I'm just going to scroll up a little bit. Um, let's see, yeah, Swindon 1969. I learned the dangers of browsing Hatton's Rails late at night and realised that I managed to spend £400 overnight. It is so easily done, isn't it? I must admit, I spent nearly £300 um, the other day uh, from Rails. Just, just um, They've got this little tab where you click on it. It's just like bargains. And you could get lost in there going, oh, I'll grab one of them. Oh, that's a good... And before you know it, it's not a bargain because you spent like four grand. Uh, Mark Wilson, um, come on everyone, please release Les. <laughs> he's at home, he's probably got his feet up watching Coronation Street. Um, uh, Otis JB, I mean, did you want to review my studies? Ah, right, I've got a rule with the channel. I, and the reason that um, I, I thank you for the offer, it's really generous of you, but uh, I have to decline. The reason for this is because um, if people send in models it's very easy to become overwhelmed and there's a channel on youtube intercity 82 really big uh, one of the pioneers of railway modeling on youtube and unfortunately one of the reasons that um the channel got overwhelmed was that uh will who um was the guy behind intercity 82 had people sending in models for review and it just it kind of overtook him and he ended up with a garage full of these things and there's a lot of pressure involved in that. So um, it's a really generous offer, but I, I'm going to decline. And, and that's the reason why it's too easy to become just overwhelmed with models coming in. So um, I accept review samples from the manufacturers and I, I do get quite a few come through. And um, I tend to like to review stuff that is usually still available in the shops. But thank you very much for um, your very, very kind offer. Um I like trust, but how did you manage that? I managed to get a four-car Backman Voyager on eBay for just fifty pounds. What was wrong with it? Um, that is really, actually, a great price for that. No, I'm not into modern image. I, I say this ad nauseum, but a Backman Voyager for that price is actually a really, really good price. So you, you did what well, you did well, my friend. Uh, J94. I really like that new Smoky Joe. I know what you mean. It's and the thing about it is, it's in the 80, 1980s retro Hornby packaging that you know, I remember from when I was younger. Uh, and that is a lot of people's um, childhood there. And um, I think it's a really great move to re-release a stalwart of the range. You know, they were nicknamed the Pocket Rockets. And I think that it is a great model that will be snapped up by a lot of people on a nostalgia binge. Um uh, Daryl Hearn, I'm after a tilting Voyager at some point. Um, I don't know what the model doesn't. T uh, I, I'm not big. I'm, I probably shouldn't. Um, I shouldn't actually try and comment too much on things I don't know much about. But uh, good luck. Good luck hunting. Russell Benton, that white chocolate chip cookie looks particularly delicious. You've also got me into Faustino wine. Found Faustino 5 in Asda. I blame you. Yeah, Faustino 5 is my favourite red wine. I can well recommend it. If you, well, actually, no, I'm... Let me just, just back that train up. Beep, beep, beep. Um, Faustino 2 is my favourite of all time, but you just can't get it. Uh, but Faustino 5 is a good second. Uh, I like transport. The standard Voyager isn't too rare, but the tilt of cross-country is. Um, Otis JB. Yes, I remember IC82 completely understood. 
and understand. Joe Light Railway, Hornby is named the 040, um, sorry, sorry, Smoky Joe after me. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Daryl Hearn, yeah, I see a Virgin one last year, brand new. Oh, that, um, yeah, um, £110, so they didn't have the funds. Angus is trying to, what have happened to IC82? Um, very complicated. I do know a lot of the, the real reasons, but... Um, I, I take the view that it's it's for Will to to share these, not me. Nothing sinister, uh, but certainly um, he is still about just not making YouTube videos. Um, I like transport. Uh, oh, uh, talking about you, you find out. Uh, going out tonight, twelve fifty nine. ICHD made a little comeback a few months ago, but has stopped posting YouTube vids for some reason. Yeah, um, there's personal reasons. I think he explained some of them in the video. Uh, Joe Light Railway, have you ever met Sam's Trains? No, uh, yes, yes, at the D-Class launch event at the National Railway Museum. He was sat next to the cupboard monkey, but didn't say hello, and we didn't recognise him. He looks a bit different when he's incognito. Uh, Otis JB, Pocket Rocket means something else to the kids today. What does it? Pocket Rocket. So what's a pocket? Oh, is it like a hot hatch or something? I don't know. Sorry, What? Apparently, um, the kids, the youth of today, um, think that's basically their junk, which... Uh, OK, um, we'll, we, we shall file that away for future reference. Um, let's have a look. <laughs> D87 Kelly, best bargain I got was a free blue-grey forcer. Free? How, how did you get that for free? I mean, I got one of those. Uh, that's class 411, isn't it? Um, I got blue grey one for I think it was about sixty five pounds, brand new in box, um, through a cash converter of all places. We didn't ask any questions, um, but for free, how? How did you get that for free? Uh, Daryl Hearn, here's a toy fair in a few weeks. So um, blah, blah, it just suddenly jumped. Oh, I'm well behind on the comments again. Uh, so I may have one right. Um, uh, bish bash bosh. Bish bosh boosh. Um, New Junction asks, do you feel you could truly bash a genuinely bad model in a review for fear of a manufacturer cutting future samples off? Um, that's actually a really good question. I have bashed models before. Admittedly, I bought it with my own money and it was a Will's kit. And um, I, I think the videos become a bit notorious. So much so that... Um, the uh, the gentleman from Pico had a little dig at me. Um, I, I read between the lines and I I read that they were having a dig at me. I don't know whether they were, actually. Um, I think, in all honesty, I, 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 I know the temptation to go, oh, yes, yes, I, I view everything as, as I find it. I always try and find the good side in models. But yes, if it's got a glaring problem, then I will highlight it. But usually, uh, and, and actually it hasn't come, I did think about this. Um, I did slate a Oxford Rail N7 and he didn't have a go at me. I, I spoke to Scott Rhodes about this and it was a model that I would bought with my own money. And it was simply, I got a, a quality control failure. And Oxford Rail were actually very understanding. They said, you know, we were basically embarrassed that our model failed like that on the first review that anybody had done on YouTube. Um and but they said they actually went back to the factory and they made sure that the problem what had caused the problem on mine was was ensured that it wouldn't cause a problem to others so it, in some respect it was nice to learn that the manufacturer actually took that criticism on board had that been a review sample i think what i would have probably done is contacted the manufacturer and go you know this just did this is this what it's supposed to do or you know how you know I think I'd probably give them the opportunity to um, replace a defective sample if it was a defective sample. But, you know, if it's a fundamental glaring error in the model, I think I'd probably have to point it out. But that's a really good question, actually. They, they should ask that question of everybody on YouTube who does reviews. Um, right. Um, the comments have all massively jumped. So... Um, Let's have a look. Egg and chips, man. Is it true that Loco Cruz uh, cooked eggs and bacon on the fireman's shovel? Uh, possibly. Mark Wilson, can you do a live link with Ken Patterson? 
Uh, possibly, actually. Um, possibly. Um, let me just... Uh, I don't know. I'm just looking down my contacts list. Um, if Ken, if you're still in the room, I don't know whether if I can set it up, would you be willing to uh, say a few words on the live stream? I'm just looking... Um, Right, I'm just, I'm just seeing if I've actually got a contact number for Ken. I have a feeling I might do... Yes, I do. Um, I do have contact details for Ken. I don't want to just call him out of the blue and go, surprise. Uh, but, uh, yeah, let's do it. Um, right, give me a moment to get... So, Ken, I am going to see if I can call you on... It's like that moment, it's like, and the answer is, we'll be right back after the break. I don't think it's connecting. Um, so, Ken, if you're there, it's the, the Facebook Messenger, is what, um, like the Facebook audio, is what I'm using. Let's just disconnect that and uh, let me just try one more time in case it's a, a bad connection. So, um, I don't know if you're still on Facebook audio, Ken. Um, doesn't seem to want to connect. Interesting comment there. Mark Samway's cooking on a shovel. Yes, some regions drilled holes to stop the cooking whilst working. That is just, that is shady, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I don't think we... Um, uh, do, 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 do. one more try. Yeah, connected to a heart monitor. So Ken, if you're there, um, struggling to. Yeah, I don't think that's that's going to work. So yeah, Ken, if you're there, if if you can call from your end, it might get through. Um, but. We'll we'll hang about. We'll uh, we'll see if anything comes through. Um, Otis JB, it must feel great to have an influence like that in the hobby. Getting models checked in the factories of the fault doesn't occur on any others. What was wrong with the N7? It was I think it was dry solder joints, if I remember correctly, where the PCB connected to the plungers that went to the um, to the actual wheel pickups, and the what was happening was um, the solder wasn't actually um strong enough so it was it was like a little bit of flexing and it was like crack and that was the problem uh daryl hearn yeah submarine sonar possibly <laughs> um but yeah see i i took away from that actually i thought that that was very big of uh, oxford rail they could have actually turned around and gone well we're not sending you any samples because you just um you you know you made a big uh, um thing about our local but actually they went okay they're absolutely right. A locomotive should work when you get it out of the box. So we need to actually deal with that. And it was probably quite a rare thing. Um, the, 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 uh -huh. Hello, you're on air. Please don't swear. Is that you, Ken? Can you hear me? Hello? 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 I think the, the connection just dropped. Let's have a... Let's just have a look. Um, I'm going to just try... Try connecting one more time. Aha! Hello. Oh, hello. Is that Ken? It is. Hi, this is Jenny. Um, is... I know, I know. This is amazing. Let's see if I can give you some video. <laughs> um, I, I can't put the video on air. That's the only thing. The way we've got it set up, it's a bit like in a radio studio. So um, uh, let's have a look. You, you'll... 
Oh, I see it. Right. Um, I've got, I've got the picture. I don't know whether if I hold that up to, um, so you're, you're kind of, um, on the screen there, but I can't put it from the phone onto the computer at the moment. Our setup is, okay. is set up like, um, in a radio studio. So it's set up for phone calls rather than video calls at the moment. It's something we need to work on, but it's great to have you on. Uh, we finally get to chat. Uh, a uh, big, big fan of your What's Neat This Week uh, podcast. And, um, um, gosh, I'm looking at the setup behind you there. Um, I take it that's your, um, your your model making room, is it? Yes, here's the, here's the podcast table. Ah, I do recognize that. I'm, I'm going to just try and hold that up so that people can see. Um, that's, our, that's our podcast set. That's our, the old microphones. Excellent. But yeah, I'm sitting in front of my spray booth. That's where I get my desk and I conduct business. This is amazing. Do you have any idea what this phone call would cost if we use a telephone? <laughs> um, it's probably something like um, 15 bucks a, a bucks a minute or something like that, I would suggest. <laughs> I don't know. That, um, um, I mean, this is just it's just coming out of data. So it's it's free at this end. Uh, but yeah, right. it, it would be really expensive if you actually physically phoned a, a, a landline or a mobile phone. True that. <laughs> the, the wonders of I modern to, technology. I think I had to sign off of YouTube and sign on to Facebook in order for this to work. Ah, uh, right. So uh, um, th that's my fault, I guess. Because um, uh, 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 we we basically because we had um, Jack Morgan on from Hattons, uh, one of the big retailers in the UK earlier on. So we had all the equipment set up for using the um, um, Facebook audio at the moment. OK, um, but, yeah, no, it's finally great to actually um, talk to you. We've kind of we traded messages a bit in the past. I know you've been in the live stream before. So are you a regular viewer of the of the Jenny Monday Club? Only, only when I see the red light on, sometimes do I get to watch your show. <laughs> oh, right, uh, because yeah, because I, I suppose the time difference. Um, what time is it actually in uh, where you are at the moment? We're at half past nine at night, and I'm at three thirty p.m. afternoon. Right. Um, so probably a little bit more social time for you, I guess. Um, but um, so, what's the weather like where you are? This is—it's a very British thing. It's like we we always ask about the weather. Because <laughs> we've got heavy rain and cold winds at the moment. Uh, whereabouts in the states actually are you? Let me let me get a longer cord for the camera. So we've got Ken Patterson on the line, and um, uh, it's it's a, a, an absolute honour actually to to get Ken on. Uh, he's a, a legend in the model model rail community with the What's Neat This Week podcast. So, it's just my job. It's my job. It's my job. So do you do it's that? What I do. Well, I'm going to unplug the camera. I hope I don't lose you, but I'm going to unplug this camera and plug it back in. Yeah, no worries. I don't know whether we've lost... Uh... Ah. So I'll just take a moment to... Um... Just take a moment to um, see see whether the connection comes back. He's just moving the camera at the moment. Um, yeah, Mark Wilson. It's actually Ken Patterson. Um, so look, my um, asking. Oh yeah, I will. I will do, Mark. Actually, um, I think we may have lost the line. Unfortunately, I don't know whether Ken's still there. He just unplugged the camera to move it. I don't know if you can hear me, Ken. <laughs> I, I think, are we, it says we're connected. It says we're connected, but I don't think we are. So I, I'm gonna give that a minute or so and then, um, I'm going to, um, yeah, connection dropped. Hi, 
Hi, Ken. Are you, are you there? Ah, we've gone mobile. Let me... I'm here. Brilliant. Um, I'm here. I'm just going to try and hold the um, the image up. Here's, to where, the... here's where you are on the computer. I've got you. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. So, uh, we're getting the full tour here. Oh, wait, oh. I think we, we've just lost signal again. So, I'm guessing... Uh, how... Hi there. I think we've got um, um, the connection keeps dropping out, but uh, I mean that is an amazing workshop. I'm just going to hold the picture up. Asked about the weather. There's the weather. Oh wow! So uh, it's just that's the Garden Railroad. Oh, that is amazing. I, I I've this got a very where I do all my photography. That is an amazing view. Yes. Wow, <laughs> I'm afraid the, the view out of the back of my house is um, another house, so I, I'm very jealous of that. And that is an there's, our what, there's our what's neat table. That's brilliant. I'm just going to hold that up again so I can show that to the to the viewers. So um, we're getting a, a full on tour there. That is is wonderful. And um, what have you got coming up in the next what's neat this week podcast? Um, what guests have you got? Are you are you allowed to tell me, or is that a secret until the day? No, there's no secrets. <laughs> can you see the stage? I can. Yes, yes. Yeah, I see it. So that when we do a Skype interview, we do it this way. Right. We all sit here at the microphones, and I could actually bring you in and give you great sound on Skype. Yeah, I can hear that. I, I'm hearing you perfectly. Yeah, it's all coming through lovely. When we do Skype, I bring you through the soundboard, so I bring you through the microphones. Right. Oh, brilliant. But we're not doing that right now. All I've got is a Logitech <laughs> camera, a little camera set up right here. That's great. Um, so uh, how did you originally get into model railroading? Is this something that um, uh, maybe your father kindled an interest or um, uh, did you come in later yeah. in life? No, I was actually born in England in 1965. And my father was into the British trains big time when he was over mm. there uh, in the military. Right. Um, so so what age were you when you, you left the UK? Oh, I was I was not even a year old. Right, right. So you've got no memory at all. Uh, but I, I mean, so have you, um, is your modeling exclusively American outline or do you um, follow the UK outline? Yeah. No, it, it's pretty much all American. Because mm. I must admit, the, the American outline stuff, always, I find it very impressive. And I think the thing about American railroad modelers that impresses me the most is you've got um, quite a different way of doing scenery that seems like you're not afraid to try out new methods and new materials and when i was starting out in um, in railway modeling i always tended to find myself looking to america for inspiration because i felt that you guys had a much better approach to uh, modeling techniques uh, in in the uk I guess people get stuck in their ways. And for a long time, it was, you know, like we used the tried and trusted method from 1953 and it just felt so boring and stuck in its way. But you guys, you know, there was these great new products, these new techniques, and you just weren't afraid to give something a go. And the, the end result of your layouts just looked so much better at the time. So it's been a big inspiration for me. It's amazing because European scenery is so different. You guys model it right. You get it right. <laughs> Another thing you guys do is you guys are big time into RC cars. You yeah. guys have got the little gears and the mechanisms and bulldozers and cranes. We don't have that in this country. And we there's not even an exclusive distributor that sells it in this country. All right. So you don't even get... Uh, I know that Fowler do um, like a road system where... You get the little vehicles and they follow a wire that's buried in the road. So you, you can't even get hold of that stuff very easily then. No, we, we have the Faller stuff. That's pretty popular. The Renaults company out of Chicago stocks all that Faller. Mm. And so does Wather. They stock Faller too. Mm. Um, but what I'm really talking about is where you use a radio remote control to control the vehicles and you can steer them and drive them and park them. 
Right, yeah, I, there was um, at the Wally exhibition a couple of years ago, I saw a really good model. It was, I think it was O-Gage, but they had a remote control tipper truck and they were loading it using um, uh, like a rust and bickerous shovel. And then they were driving it around the layout and tipping it into the train. And it was just, it was such an innovative use, I thought, of the technology. Right. No, it's truly that. It's amazing. We, we would like to have that in this country. I've built my layout so that there are already a lot of roads on it mm. so that we can drive these vehicles. Um, there was a Japanese company that had a truck, a semi truck, and we had that. I can't remember the name of it offhand, but we've talked about it on the show. Um, but yeah, the show is nothing but a way to uh, feed the kids and just mm. it's my it's what I do for a living now. Right. I mean, I mean that must so be great. You... Sorry. As long as YouTube is there, we're all good. Yeah, I mean, I th I've, what I've found with YouTube, and I guess may maybe you found something similar, is that it's really great at connecting modelers with each other um, so that we can share ideas. And you know, I found there's a really great community feel. Is, is that how you, you find uh, YouTube for the for the modeling community? Oh, it's it's remember in the old days when you would go buy a video cassette. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know. We on our country, we would have the Alan Keller videos. And so that was our way to see the model railroad world other than a paper magazine. Mm. But now with the advent of YouTube, there's so much media out there. You can't watch it all. Yeah. So, I, I, I mean, I must admit, I, I'm always amazed when, when I look at the stats on my videos that um, like tonight, it'll say something like, uh, you know, 160 days worth of viewing happened during the live stream. And it's just, it's staggering how connected it's made modelers. True that. And you know, the leader in the pack is Luke Towen. Now Luke Towen can get 3 million views on one of his videos. Right. That's, that, amazing. that's a lot. And the one important thing about all the YouTube guys in this country that make videos and like yourself, mm -hmm. I don't want to compete. I don't want to compete with them. I want to bring them in to our show. Yeah, I mean, it's very much the way I look at it. Is we're not competitors; we're colleagues. Right. Uh, and I think, um, you know, I've I've always tried to look at it um, this way in in the UK when I do my stream. And, and people do ask me, like, you know, um, some of the other big YouTubers in the UK. It's like, you know, are, are you trying to beat them to a scoop or? you know, try and, and um, um, outperform them, take audience share. And it's like, it's not like that. You know, we all complement no. each other. And I think that that's very important in my view. Right. And I think in the future, you might see in another month or so that we will be working with Kalmbach Media a little bit because they've shown an interest in wanting to cooperate and work with what we do. Right. I mean, that is, is great. I mean, I, I've noticed in the UK... There's a lot more companies kind of getting on board. Um, initially at the start, I think people viewed the likes of YouTube um, with suspicion. But of late, I think a lot of companies have realized that the the brand recognition that we get out there and, and the inspiration that makes people think, you know, I will try this product. I'll try this technique is a far more effective way of of getting the products out there to the modelers. And, you know, I've found even just in the last year, a lot of the manufacturers have become very supportive of YouTubers such as myself, which is great to see. Um, right. And, you know, another, I think... very popular, another popular man is um, James Wright. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll open up the box and he'll show you what's in the box. Mm. I mean, it's one of the things that... Um, I. When I do the, some people actually they, they think it's really awesome. Why why are you showing the box? But I think sometimes um, it was described to me that when you do these review videos and you you know, opening the box and every part of that experience, it's almost like you're allowing people to have that um, that feel of getting a new product, a new toy, having it in your hands, and it makes it more accessible to people who say maybe couldn't afford to. Um, buy and open a new model every day they can do that and you you can see every aspect of that model as if you're there in the model shop looking it over yeah. which i think is really important Absolutely. because when you look at magazines um you, you get that little snapshot picture 
which is never the same. You think, you know, I want to see the other side. I want to see the underside. I want to see how the DCC chip fits in it. You know, I, I want to see elements of the detail that if you if you don't have it in video form, it just aren't there to to give you that information. And models are quite expensive. So, you know, it, it's quite a big commitment to buy a model that, you know, could be hundreds of dollars, say, um, and then to find actually it, it, it's not what I wanted um, is, you know, otherwise quite a danger. And, and I guess the videos on YouTube give that that service to modelers that they can try before they buy. No, that's true. It's a very good point. Very mm. good point. And if you don't like it, you'll have eBay to get rid of it. There is that. And actually, some of these models, um, they, they can go on eBay for more than you've paid for them, um, especially with more and more limited runs. Uh, do you get that in the States as well, where um, if you don't pre-order something, then there's a big risk that you miss out from getting it? I would say yes and no. I know pre-orders is a big deal. That's how these companies know how many to manufacture. They stay safe with their numbers so they know they've got a deal front door back door the deal's complete mm. but you'll find that there are so many hobby shops that pre-order that it's always out there somewhere yeah i mean um i think in the uk as well it's one of the things that i've always extolled the virtues of is you know don't neglect the smaller hobby shops because quite often they've still got right. in stock the things which you know the big box shifters have already sold out of and at the end of the day, if we don't support our local model shops, then they're not going to be there for us when we need it. And it's what the hobby needs is a good network of shops. Um, but certainly in the UK, it does feel like um, more and more models don't hang around. And that if you do want a particular livery or a model of a very specific item, they do sell out very quickly. And I don't know whether that's a good sign or a bad sign. Because I remember when I was a kid, you, you, you could buy the catalogue of, of, from a, of the company at the beginning of the year and all those models were always available. Um, and it doesn't feel like it's like that anymore. But, you know, maybe that shows that we've got more choice. Maybe it shows that more people are buying them. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm mixed whether it's a good or a bad thing for what, the hobby. What got you what got you into the hobby, Jennifer? How? Why, why are you in the hobby? Um, one word, father. Um, he was looking for an excuse to get his model railway out of the loft. And when I was a kid, uh, I'm the middle of three, and um, it was basically a case if he could get one of the kids to take the bait, then he could continue playing with his train set. And I can just remember as a small child being fascinated by it. I loved it. And it was the creativity, the imagination that when you, you make um, a, a layout, a model layout, you're making a miniature world. Um, and in a way, it's an extension of, you know, some people paint paintings, some people do sculpture, some people do um, model making. And for me, it was that way of channeling a creativity that I just found that I, I really loved. But yeah, I blame my dad. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. I'm so happy for you. Uh, no, it's wonderful. And and now the NMRA show, the National Model Railroad Association show, is going to be in England. Yeah, I've heard that because um, I think you've had Kathy Millett on What's Neat this week, and um, she's she's um, very much involved in that because um, I did a TV series with her, um, Great Model Railway Challenge, which is right. great. it's great to see that um, you know model railways. Um, going mainstream being on a mainstream tv channel do you have in america anything similar to that no i've tried to contact those people and bring that into this country i really really want that into this country mm. you guys are more advanced in media in england i think honestly the english population per capita there are more model railroaders in your demographic than there are in our country per person if you know what i mean yeah, I mean, I, I guess because because America's so much bigger that in terms of market, there's a bigger dollar value on the U.S. market. But in terms of, I guess, hobby density, that you know, you could in any one city, you, you're more likely to come across somebody who's into railway modeling. I guess, but it's, right. I, I suppose it, you know, going even going way back into the 1920s, 1930s, 
railways in the UK always held quite a, a special fascination to people, I guess, and maybe more so than they did in America. Right. It was it, look. It was very popular here, and it still is. The internet is bringing it back, mm. and. Through the internet, we've discovered the youth. If you look at the magazines in this country over the years, you know, the numbers have gone down with regards to circulation. Mm -hmm. And they've always blamed that. They always would say, well, the hobby is dying because the modelers are getting old and dying off or retiring. But that I don't find that to be completely true because the internet is rejuvenating and bringing people back into it. It's easier to find and it's more accessible to people. Yeah, very much. And it's one of the things that we found when we did um, Great Model Railway Challenge was that it kindled this interest in the younger generation, people who might have otherwise gone on and just um, had games consoles and played stuff like Modern Warfare or, or FIFA, that kind of thing. They were finding their creative side through seeing these these model railways getting constructed it's often quite imaginative model railways and thinking I, I really want to do that and when i went to um alexandra palace after um the first series um was shown to the model railway exhibition they were saying they were getting more families through more young people genuinely becoming interested in the hobby because they'd seen it portrayed in a very creative very fun way on television Yes. I guess for so long, it's it, the hobby went through a period where I think we kind of became the butt of jokes. People would kind of call us anoraks and, um, you know, there was this stereotype that wasn't cool. And I think we finally right. reached a point where, like you say, the Internet lets us get our message out there, lets us show people that we aren't that stereotype, that actually there's there's so much more to this hobby and I think the message is getting out there and stuff like GMRC has helped it get out there. And we're seeing a revival in the hobby. Uh, you know, I've never known it so popular. Um, but I suppose at the same time, you know, stuff like YouTube has allowed us to all connect with each other. And suddenly we find that there's so many more people like us that we may nece not necessarily have ever been able to get in touch with. Right. You got to figure in the old days, what we, we, we would drive to the hobby shop, we would look at the wall of magazines, yeah. <laughs> and we would meet two or three customers that would come into the store while we were there. Yeah, and but... now, I'm talking to you in England, and it's an absolute pleasure to have <laughs> met you. It's awesome. Well, that, and it's an absolute pleasure to have met you. You're, you're a legend in the hobby, and I, I feel honoured that you, you've you come on my, my little live stream. Um, so I'm... I'm, I, I'm you can probably tell a little bit lost for words. Uh, it's just amazing to be able to talk to a legend like yourself. Stop it. You're not little. You're just like me. <laughs> we, all enjoy this. we all enjoy this together. Um, I've been doing it my whole life, though. I've been doing it like my first published photography was in 1988 in Model Railroader magazine. And I took it and ran with it. I literally for years uh, made a living just shooting still model photos. Mm. I mean, I've worked for Bachman for over 22 years. Um, that's how I've got this, the latest engine we just put on the show this weekend mm. that I released last night is this, this beautiful, it looks European to me, but this is that Charger locomotive that our mm. Amtrak, our American Amtrak system is using now. Yeah, it looks, um, I'm, I'm not that knowledgeable about modern image stuff in the UK, but it, it does look a little bit like something like a Class 67 or a 68. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, some beautiful models coming through. And do you find that in a way as modelers we've never had it so good in terms of the quality of the models and the range of models available absolutely and it's all due to the advent of computer technology and mm. computer aided design when that came along i mean for years and years the american f unit nose was a big discussion because nobody ever got the nose dimensions correctly or the mm. windows correctly and you know with with the advent of rapido trains actually scanning real models with mm. a scanner i mean how do you get it wrong all the numbers and bits are now there so now you can have a perfect model yeah i mean we're starting to see a lot of that in the uk and what i find quite interesting is when you compare the the really modern up-to-date just released models with the the 
model of the same prototype but it was released 30 40 50 years ago the difference is staggering at just how accurate they are they capture the shape perfectly i know in the uk the class 52 westerns have a very complicated shape um above the cabs and um, companies have tried to make it and failed so many times over the years but like you say now 3d scanning software and hardware allows you to just make a perfect model of it um, yeah you are absolutely right yeah and they're even doing um what amazes me hornby uh, hobbies have just introduced um, um it's actually a steampunk range which is probably a whole ca uh, kettle of worms in itself it, it does split opinion but as part of that range, they've got some figures of people dressed in this sort of steampunk attire. And um, what amazed me, I interviewed the creator of the range, the guy who designed it all. And he said they scanned real people who got dressed up in costumes so that when they were made in model form, they look completely accurate because they really are miniature versions of um, eight people who got dressed up in costumes and were scanned. Yes. Yeah, I think Frazier has been doing that for about two years now. Mm. So when you get these Frazier figures, am I saying the company name right, Frazier? Um, I think it's Prizer, but um, I, I, the, the German company, so if it's German, yeah. I think it'd be Prizer would be how you pronounce it. Right. I think they have been scanning people in order to make their figures now mm. because they look, the detail is so much better on, on the miniature people. Yeah. And I guess, you know, if you can do it, it makes more sense. And arguably, the other thing the technology does is it allows you to create a bigger range and probably cheaper. Because, you know, if you scan a person, it's just computer runtime. But if you have to tool up and model a, a miniature person, you know, that's a very skilled job with a tool maker to otherwise make the tool. Hello. Hey, hey James. Uh, I'm doing a live... Uh... I'm doing a live uh, chat right now on YouTube with Jennifer Kirkland over there in England. So if you get on YouTube and dial it up, type in Jenny Kirk, you'll be able to watch. Okay. You'll be able to watch this, James. <laughs> this is James okay. Regeer. This is my, uh, you know, very important podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh wow, this is uh, this is great. I know, James. Say hi to say hi to Jenny's audience. Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll dial up YouTube here uh, shortly. And, uh... it, it's amazing. I've never done this before, and I think it's fascinating. So I'm learning something today, James. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. Uh, this is great. And I, I think that... Oh, I want to come say hi to England. <laughs> Jennifer, she's running away. This is my beautiful <laughs> daughter, Anna. She's hiding. <laughs> come say hi. Come wave. Everybody in the UK wants to say hello to you. She doesn't want to. No, I don't know where the pipe cleaners went, sweetheart. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is this is great. Uh, do say hi to her for me, but um, I don't want to unnecessarily scare. But uh, but no, I mean, it's. I I think that yeah, we we've never lived in such a good time for the hobby and. Um, I mean, are you getting all of the um, the, the DCC type stuff that's coming through in Europe, where they're they're, they're having um, you know lots of extra value to a model? So you're getting lots of lighting, sound, all that kind of thing. We've got a lot of stuff from Lok Sound, ESU Lok Sound. Yeah, we get them as well in the UK. Right, and that's that's Matt Herman. He he does all of that. That's the American uh, person that's in charge here in America mm. is Matt Herman, but Lok Sound has had some pretty impressive, uh, you know, products. They've got that DCC system that runs trains, and their decoders are pretty good. Mm. You know, we've got soundtracks in the United States, uh, Tsunami Two decoders. Those are very, very good decoders. Mm -hmm. And we've also got another company called uh, TS TSI. I believe that's what it is. Mm. No, TCS. TCS is another company yes, that I... makes really good. Bachman Trains is starting to use TCS uh, decoders in all of their models. Yeah, I've um, I bought some of them um, offline, and they are actually really good decoders. Yeah, they really are. James Regeer is asking me how to find you. 
Jenny um, Kirk. Jennifer right? Kirk. Um, and basically, if you get an um, if you get an Olympic uh, gold medal winning figure skater, you've got the wrong one. <laughs> Jennifer Kirk. K I R K. Right. Yeah, like in Star Trek. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's funny. This is amazing. I mean, this is one of the things that I, I suppose YouTube's become the new frontier for pushing the boundaries of what you can do in media. I mean, my background um, was um, I, I, I once upon a time I worked freelance for the BBC, so I did radio. So can you point your camera at yourself so I can see you and not oh, the ceiling. Oh, sorry. There we are. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. So I ha had it resting on the on the the thing because uh, obviously because I'm not able to get the video up on the the actual computer I'm using. Which if I turn around, that that's right. that's what I'm seeing on the screen. You see, um, because we've got it all set up. It's going through. There's a desk up here. So there's um, we're plugged into the jack socket on the bottom of an iPhone. Is how we're doing it. Um, yeah, if I were, if I set up my laptop, I could do this differently. I could be on the YouTube site and then also bring in this through Facebook. Right. Yeah. There, there's probably a different couple of different ways to skin this cat. Yeah, uh, I know some people use Skype to do this kind of thing, and then they can get um, the video footage up. But I, I've literally only started um, experimenting with this in the last um, three three four weeks. And it's bringing in some of the things that we used to do on radio where we'd have people calling in and trying to use that idea to rather than have people physically have to come here. Um, right. it, it means you can have a wide variety of people on the show and not actually have to physically get them all into to where you're filming. Um, it's wonderful. It's <laughs> wonderful. If when I have you on the show, I would actually do a live screen capture of just you. And then when I edit the video, I drop that into the video. Right. I love the ability to edit video and not do it live mm. because I have complete control of every word. I know exactly what you mean. I mean, this is the only video that I do that goes out live. All the other stuff that we do on this channel is all pre-edited. So, so, for example, we've just filmed today for Wednesday's video and Friday's video. Um, so that's all going to get edited and it'll all be crisp. It'll be slick. Um, but wow. so, sometimes I, th I find with the live stream on the Monday, the thing I like about it is very much the um, the interaction with the people live. So we've got um, a screen up here with like a chat room uh, and it means that if people ask questions. I can Im immediately jump on that. And quite often you'll find that the, the audience will suggest things or ask about things that you'd have never have thought of. And it takes the conversation in a, in a, a new and interesting direction, uh, which I quite like. So I, I'm just just looking I'm, <laughs> at the moment. People are saying I'm blasting their eardrums. So I'm just going to fiddle with the levels up here. It won't affect what, what you or I hear, but uh, um, I'm just seeing if anybody's asked any questions. Um, the levels should be all right. I don't know why there's... Um... But um, let's have a look. Oh, you're being called sick. Oh, uh, I think we've just dropped the video. Yeah, that'll happen sometimes. Can you still hear them? No, it's gone silent at the other end. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, no. Oh, no. There we are. Oh, no. Hi there. Sorry, it dropped out again. Technology. <laughs> That's the one thing technology does. It mysteriously just disconnects you. So, um, but no, um, I'm just looking through the through the um, the comments. I'm just seeing if anybody's um, asking any questions for uh, uh, you. You're being called Sir Ken Patterson. That shows just how much esteem you're held in in the UK in the the model rail community. <laughs> My home country. Definitely, yeah. Um, I have. I'm a dual citizen of the United States and England. I have dual citizenship. Oh, I've got a friend who does that. She says it's great because she, she, even though she, she's lived in the UK all her life, she can vote for the president and um, things like that. But she says, the downside is you have to pay tax even if you're not in the country. So I suppose they have to let you vote for the president because no, no taxation without representation. So they have to let you vote, but then they can take tax right. off you. <laughs> I do pay a lot of tax. I know that. Oh, you and me both. 
I wouldn't mind, but I never see the tax man round here but doing his share. <laughs> but I'm just seeing if... Um, uh, let's have a look. Seeing if... Uh, I think everybody's just awed by your presence. We're just getting lots of comments of people going, my God, you've got Ken on your show. Yes, you do, and I love it. Thank you very much. I, it, it is an amazing honour. and um, we're, we're just one of us. We are the same. <laughs> I, yeah, definitely. And um, I think it's, it's the enthusiasm for the hobby that, that people warm to with, with yourself. It's, you know, you're genuinely, you know, everything about the hobby interests you. You know, you find, you know, you... You know, you can hear the enthusiasm when a new product comes out. When you're looking at it, yes. it's like, wow, this is this is great. And you know, I like to think that I I have a fraction of that when I do things that you know that there is this um, the love of the hobby comes through. And I always say to people when they say, you know, um, you know, are you sponsored by X, Y, and Z? It's like, no, because I. I, I love the products that come from all the manufacturers because without them, our hobby would be so much harder. So, you know, uh, I, I'm not afraid to recommend manufacturers that I think make great products. Other manufacturers that make competing products, if they're good products, then I am excited by them. Um, and I also like to explore and find new products. And I found, especially of late, uh, Woodland Scenics has become a, a range that's now much more readily available in the uk um it, it's yeah. it's grown very much in popularity but i'm guessing you guys have had it for quite quite some time and I, woodland scenic is about 150 miles south of me hmm. they're in missouri here in the same state that i live in um i've made a great attempt to contact them but they have their own social media department they hmm. do their own things i do notice that when i do come out with how-to videos for example a how-to video on how I made water, they come out with a water product line. <laughs> or a video on how I used uh, a certain cement mixture to make roads, now they've come out with a <laughs> can of cement mix for roads. So I do know they're watching. Yeah, yeah. And they take some of the ideas and they run with them, which is okay. That's all fair in love and war. That's how business works. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm good with that. And in, in some respects, it, it's... An... I, I just... You talked about something earlier on your show, and that was if you had a manufacturer with a product that maybe wasn't a happy product, maybe mm. it had some issues, or it wasn't the best it could be, I don't think I would ever comment on that on a show publicly, yeah. because what we say could cost a company an easy couple hundred thousand dollars, Yeah. and you don't want to do that because all of these companies... I want to say that we're all in in a family together. We all mm -hmm. want to see them prosper and do well. And if there's anything that we notice that maybe it needs to be uh, maybe attention paid to on a product, I would tell them privately something like that. Yeah. Very carefully privately <laughs> too, because again, it's not my business. If mm. I were really to show it off what's right, I would go to China and have it made myself. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. And it's, it's why when I, I was asked earlier on by um, uh, New Junction, I, I am aware that um, there's a couple of products where I have highlighted issues. But what I'm actually really pleased to say with one of them is that the company recognised it as a quality control issue and actually rectified it. And I I met the uh, the marketing manager for that company at one of the big model rail exhibitions, and I thought, oh, he's gonna, he's going to tell me off for doing that, but he said, <laughs> but he said actually, in a way, what it meant was that they could they could then go and fix that problem and know that by fixing it, they weren't going to get people going. Actually, you know, there's this problem, and it just keeps coming up and keeps coming up, and in a way, I thought it was really good of them. That they acknowledged, yes, there'd been a problem and fixed it. And um, so um, I've worked with them since. And like you said, I think in future, looking back, if I had something that was clearly a quality control issue, you know, maybe one that slipped through the net, I guess I'd contact them and say, look, you know, I don't think it's supposed to do this. Can you clarify? Um, and, right. you know, give them the opportunity to send out an example that was um, doing what it should do. Um but I, I know exactly what you're saying. At the end of the day, it's like in, in the UK, uh, Hornby's, a big company, goes back. They're just celebrating their centenary this year. And um, they went through a period where 
um, they they did really struggle, and there were even you know people saying they're not going to survive. And I thought that it was you know, if they hadn't have survived, it would have been very bad for the hobby. And I, I be, because it would have taken a chunk out of the ready to run market, um, including products that were really great products, and it would have also cut down on the amount of innovation when you've got multiple companies. They all kind of innovate in different ways. And I think that's good for the hobby because you get a, a company that will bring something new to the market, try something out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And I think the more companies you've got doing that, the better it is for us as a consumer because we get more products to be able to play with, to use, to experiment with. Um, and you know, I, re I remember the bad old days where you know, if you wanted to buy something to make your scenery out of, you you literally got a bag, and it would be sawdust that had been dyed a strange shade of green, and that's what you were expected to work with. And now we've got these fabulous products that um, you know not only make a really great effect for like making trees, for making grass, for making ground, for making roads, but they're accessible, you know, they make, they, they go out of their way to make things easy to replicate. So I did a how to video on the Woodland Scenics tree making kits. And what struck me was that they'd, they'd made an effective way that you could replicate over and over again. But even somebody who wasn't necessarily very confident at making models could could create that result. And I thought that that made it for me a superb product. That's how you make a winning product, and that's how you make money. Definitely, yeah, because at the end of the day, the manufacturers, they're not a charity. They're here to make money, and it's why sometimes I get, and you probably get the same in the States, um, people who criticise, say, the models are too expensive, uh, you know, why are they so, keep putting the prices up, and, you know, at the end of the day, they've got to make money, they've got to satisfy shareholders, that's just how the world works, and you can't begrudge people from making a wage and you know the people in China getting a reasonable wage and you know these things they do cost money to make and if the companies don't get a return on that they can't do the R&D which means that they can't then bring out new models so I don't so we, we might all grumble at price but you can't begrudge them doing that <laughs> I've, I've heard the grumbling I've heard people I've been um I've had people complain that I bring advertisers onto the show, mm. um, but I got to tell you what, nobody else has done it the way we're doing it, mm -hmm. and it works. And the advertisers that come on our show are selling their products. Mm -hmm. They have an effect that is absolutely directly traceable. You can monetize it. You can observe it. You get an instant effect when we talk about a Bachman product or an Atherin product or the latest tree make the trees from Renaults over there. It's and that, that those come from Poland. Mm. But once you talk about it, they can they call me up and like the guy that sold throttles in one day, he sold like two hundred and fifty dollars in uh, the throttle holders, these metal brackets. Mm. Um, so the show is having a great effect and and it's gotten to the point where I don't have to cold call, make phone <laughs> calls all day, begging the manufacturers to get on board with us. They're starting to discover it on their own, yeah. which is a bonus. Yeah, I mean, I, I must admit, I found um, it was quite humbling in a way. I went to a uh, a big show, and when I went up to places like the Bankman Stand, they knew who I was um, without me having to introduce myself, which um, I found very humbling. But it does show the power of um, things like YouTube, of social media. Um, but, you know, like, like you say, I mean, I've done reviews on products which have then sold out um, within uh, like a week or so of that going up. Um, so, you know, I've, I've worked with manufacturers on um, doing themed videos. Um, I worked with Hornby before Christmas and because I think it benefits the hobby. Um, it does. And, you know, earlier on today, I don't know whether you caught, um, uh, had Jack Morgan from Hattons who were a big retailer in the UK, but they also make a lot of their own models. They've gone into being a manufacturer as well. <clears throat> so I think it's great to get people like that on the show as well, because you get lots of different perspectives. So we talked Absolutely. To, we talked today about the um, the launch of the Hornby 2020 range, which happened last Monday. So I've had um, 
him on as a, to get the retailer's perspective i had last week i had the manufacturer came on um hornby themselves a guy called michael day and um, we got him on the, on a phone call so we got the the what the um the manufacturer was thinking you know the thought behind the the model process and then i also got um somebody from one of the uh, magazines as well a guy called callum wilcox on so we got the perspective of the the trade press and then I got um, a guy on uh, Cottesmore as his YouTube channel, and to you know to see what other YouTubers thought, and it, and it, it it's really great to get that full picture from each person's point of view, and I think the actual the, the viewers find that very enlightening, you know that they're getting these different perspectives. You're not just getting one side of the story. Yes, absolutely. The podcast I call it a podcast, mm. but it's not. It's a show that we do on every Saturday night. That show is all about the people. That show is all about the different guests and our standard regular crew, Mike mm -hmm. Buddy, James Regeer, Joshua Barton, all the guys that are on the show. Chris Palomares is a good one too. There's so many great people that walk into the studio mm -hmm. and sit behind the microphone and they share their slice of the hobby. Mm -hmm. This show that we do is very different from the show that I do for Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine, which was my first uh, show that I ever did. That started in 2012. That shows a video that lasts between 30 minutes and 45 minutes long, and it's all about how to build it, how to get your hands dirty, how to lay track, how to do roads, make stuff, get stuff done. Mm. There's not a lot of talk. There's no talking on that show. It's all... It's all voiceover and video to show how to get an end product built, start to finish. Mm -hmm. The podcast is more about the people. So there's two different formats of video content that I produce. And both shows are now open to advertisers. Mm -hmm. And it's working. It's working beautifully. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, what I've found is that um, there's a lot of great products out there and the only thing stopping them from being super successful products is people knowing about them and it, it, it's it's you know that's often half the battle I guess, I guess it's like that with um, with all retail that um, you know it doesn't matter how great your product is if people don't know about it they, they, they don't buy it um, and I've tried to extol the virtues of a lot of new products that I found from electronics I uh, found a company called um, um, Trainomatic they do DCC chips I'd not heard of right. them before but they approached the um, my channel and said can we send you some samples to review and do a video and they were actually the best DCC chips I have ever used uh, I mean normally when you put these things in a locomotive some manufacturers locos they work better than others and you have to change a lot of the settings with these i just put them in and it didn't matter what manufacturers loco they went into they just worked perfectly um without having to change any settings and you know things like that that you're finding and and being able to tell people look these exist and this is is how good they are i, I think is great for the hobby that's awesome. It is so great what you do for the hobby, and I wish you all the success in what you're doing because at least you're a doer. You're yeah. doing it. That's it. And, and that's what counts. Yeah, and um, some of the other stuff I'm trying to do as well on the channel, um, I've got uh, my big model railway. I try and do every Friday a uh, kind of an update video. And what I found is that people really kind of gel to that idea that every week they get an update of how the models change. Now, I work very quickly. Um, um, I, I tend to be quite a, a very quick modeler. So there's often a lot to see that changes. But um, in the UK, we used to have a program called, well, actually, I think it still runs. It's called Blue Peter. It's a children's program. And one of the things that they did is they had the, the Blue Peter dog. And it was like a lot of people would watch the program and it was almost like that was their pet by proxy. And I find with doing the layout and having the regular updates and keeping people informed, it almost becomes like they adopt the layout, like by proxy, yes, they, right. they feel they feel a good connection with it. And I found that that really does work very, very well. And then the other thing that I try and do um, to play on the fact that um, I do speed modeling, I build very quickly, is I'll do things like um, like a seven hour layout build from start to finish. I built a layout in seven hours um, and then we did another one wow. that we uh, did six hours 
and I did that actually for Hornby Hobbies um, and it was featured on their, their, uh, their YouTube channel and essentially from start to finish you build the complete model, the complete diorama in, in a few hours. Oh, I'm being being asked to um, um, po to um, ask some questions. Um, Brockwell Lane um, is in the chat room. He says, can you recommend any big US YouTubers? Um, who would be um, your top top picks for going and looking out on YouTube? YouTubers? Mm. Which ones to look at? Yeah. Um, there's, so, there's so many good ones. I don't know them all. I do pay attention to John Abaticola. Mm -hmm. I look at what James Wright does, and I also look at look what Luke Towen does. Um, I, I check out Model Reorder Magazine's uh, YouTube site. I think they call it Kalmbach Media now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'd have to look at my list, but I mostly primarily see what they're up to, what they're doing, and I also check their numbers all the time to see how many viewers they've got. Right, because uh, I mean, I, I I've seen this. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I do follow and subscribe a few US YouTubers, and the thing that always strikes me is almost the vastness of the models in the US. Um, I don't know whether you guys have more space to play with, but a lot of the layout. Yeah, a lot of space. Yes. Because <laughs> in We're the yeah in the UK we all we do seem to be very space starved. It's probably quite a crowded country real estate is very expensive so it's not uncommon for people to you know have like a six before or an eight before layout which i'm guessing by u.s standards is quite small um but you know to see the vastness of scale that u.s modelers tend to do um it is just amazing and um i'm trying to remember the channel i think it's uh, um like an on30 so it's it's large narrow gauge scale and he does videos where he, he's got a camera on the train and he just sends it through the model. And the model is so amazing. It's like you're actually going on a real train ride. Um, I'm trying to think who it is. And it's just laid out in his basement. He's got a huge basement and this layout goes all the way around the basement. Right. Um, I notice you've got a headset on. Is that working for you? Um, they're just earphones. They're the Apple earphones. Um, it's just without them, I wouldn't be able to hear you. Because otherwise we oh, get okay. because otherwise we get a howl around with the um um it would get picked up on the computer and then sent back through and it would just start to whine. Hey Michelle, say hi to Jennifer. <laughs> this is Jennifer. Here, get back here with me. Oh. See you on the camera. Right hi. Hi there. How are you doing? This is my Michelle. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I've heard a lot about you. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Ken, excellent. I mean, yeah, because Ken is a legend in the in the model rail community. So I, I'm just I'm feeling really honoured. Trying to get him to go over to the UK and take a visit. You should come over. Actually, there's um there's a couple of really big shows that would be well worth to come over and and time the visit to be able to go and see. There's um the Wally show, which is in I think it's November. We've just had it in the UK. And that's quite a big one. And then there's the Alexandra Palace show, which is down at Alexandra Palace in London. And that's coming up on, I think it's the around the 20th, 21st of March this year. And that, that tends to be the one where there's a lot of um, like new product samples come through from the manufacturers and are on display there. So it's really good to be able to see the progress that manufacturers are making with their new models. <laughs> you're, you're on her show you're on her show right now yeah yeah i mean it's um uh, they're, they're only hearing the audio um i haven't managed to get the video to to go on the stream i can i can hold you up to the camera and um people on the live stream will see the picture but um uh, i i need to work on that actually because it'd be great to be able to get somebody on with the video but uh, small steps with the technology this but, is amazing <laughs> I'm just I'm just looking down. I'm seeing um, if there's other questions that. Um, oh, let's have a look. My computer's gone a bit uh, a bit slow. Um, apparently, you're getting quieter. I'm just going to see if I can. It's very difficult to get the levels right. One thing that we don't have is a sound compressor. When I used to work at radio, 
um, they'd have a, a unit on the telephone line. Every unit. And what it would do is, when it went very loud, it would it would like quieten it down. And then when it went really very quiet, it would it would make it louder. So that what you heard on the radio was a constant volume. But we don't have that, so we have to chase the levels with um, with the, wow. the little gain knob on the on the desk. But I mean, wow. it's it's great. I'm go I'm gonna have to um, sign off though in a bit though. I I've gone over my allotted time. I normally do three hours on the live stream, <laughs> but. It's just so amazing to have Ken on that uh, we're at three and a half hours and counting. <laughs> but, well, so, great. I'm so glad I got to meet you. That's great. Thank you. And it's lovely to meet you as well. And it would be great, Ken, if you come over to the UK sometime and um, you know, do a guided tour. There's, um, there's so much to see. I mean, in terms of um, just scenery and stuff, but also model railway wise. Um, we've got a lot of preserved railways here um, and... Um, things like National Railway Museum, um, uh, Locomotion at Shildon as well is great to go and see. But then also down in, in London, there's um, the um, uh, the museum with the London Underground, um, shows like Alexandra Palace as well. There's, there's a lot that goes on here. It, it's quite a vibrant community for, for modelers. Oh yeah, I'd love to go. I'd love to go. I mean, I've been seeing, you guys are making the news a lot lately. <laughs> With all your royal family turmoil, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it, that, it's, it's embarrassing, it's isn't like it? It's plastered all over the news all the time. And Brexit, Brexit, over and over. Oh again. yeah, yeah. yeah to, well. to be honest, it, it's one of those things. It just goes on and on and on. And we, we're kind of hoping now that the Brexit thing is kind of just going to take a back burner. But um, just just when you think the news is going to quieten down, the royal family goes, "Oh, here, hold my beer." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that that'll that'll be on for a while, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, uh, people here can never get enough of that. So. <laughs> oh God, you can have all you want. You can have them. We'll ship them <laughs> over. Um, but um, no, we we get an awful lot of um, what Donald Trump's done today. I don't know whether you get. Oh my So um, you know, I th I think we've. It's like I I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> uh, it's just. <laughs> You know, it's it's almost comical. I, I keep thinking that all the other countries are just laughing hysterically at us with all this going on and, you know, with everybody here in politics acting like children. So, I, you know, I think, to be honest, there's a lot of politicians over here that act like children as well. It's, you, you, <laughs> you haven't got a monopoly on, on, on politicians being a pain. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to be to go into that field anyway. So. <laughs> all right. Well, I got to I got to go. I got to go. Pile of stuff and, uh, no, anyway, it's lovely to meet you. Gonna, All right, goodbye. It's good to meet see you. you later. I'm going to try these headphones and see if they work. Am I coming through? Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly, yes. Can you hear me? Oh. <clears throat> Am I, coming I can through? hear you too. Excellent. <laughs> I hear you a little bit. No worries. I've never done this before. I want to try this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to hear you, but uh, you you do have good sound for me. Yeah, uh, it's great sound coming through from you. Yeah, I can't hear you that way. I'm going to unplug it. Well, this was interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's been great to have you on, and uh, I, I'm going to have to round it up because um, it, it's getting quite late here, but this is... It's brilliant to have you on. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much for coming on. It's been great to talk to you. And we need to sort out at some point. I'd love to come on What's Neat this week if you'd have me. Um, that would be an immense I want you honor. to be on it, yes. No worries. I would love that. I think everybody would enjoy having you. And, and, it, and it adds another dimension to the hobby. It, yeah. It shows that, you know, when Michelle Kempema used to be on from the museum out in Colorado, mm -hmm. we noticed that it made it more accessible where, where the daughter, James Regeer's daughter, would sit with him and say, look, I can be in toy trains too. Yeah. And that's it. I think a lot. It opens it up. Yeah, because I think there's this again. It's about dispelling the stereotypes. It's seen the stereotype is that it's you know it's a very male orientated thing, but actually what I found is that there are a lot of women who also are into railway modelling because it's very creative in, in a way. You know, it's 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 as creative as if you did painting, if you did sculpting. All these different um, uh, artistic yes. um, pastimes, 
railway modeling is kind of an extension of that because you're creating these miniature landscapes you know it's three-dimensional sculpting of a miniature world and you know a lot of women are very creative and when we did gmrc there were a lot of women went on that i i think because no. it, it was it, it was starting to be seen that it was acceptable to to say you know i'm a woman and i like railway mo model trains um and that's I, what know, we want uh, I, yeah, and I think it's a great thing because you know um, it, it kind of started in a way. I did um, Biggest Little Railway, which is a program on Channel Four in the UK, and what we actually did with that, it, it wasn't really railway modelling per se. We laid a, we laid a model train track that was actually O gauge from um, one side of the country to the other. It was about seventy two miles up in Scotland, and what we found with that was because there was a lot of women on that, it kind of broke down the barriers and made women in general got to realize it was okay to say actually i like model trains and then building yes. on from that once we came to doing gmrc there were like whole teams of women who were applying to go on it and it was great to see people finally um feel it was it was okay to say yeah i'm a woman and i like model trains um and you know that's it's, awesome it's really breaking down the barriers, which is something which I'm very keen to see. And when I go to shows as well, I'm getting a lot of women coming up to me and saying, thank you for portraying it as being OK to um, to be a woman in the hobby, which is brilliant. That's awesome. Thank you for what you do for the hobby and keep on doing it. No you have our support. You have all of the support. Thank you very much. And um, look, it's been a great honor to have you on. I'm going to have to sign off, but um, thank you very much for coming on. And um, we shall speak soon. All right, Jenny. No problem. Take care and uh, have yourself a great day. Thank you. And there we have it, guys and girls. We had the legend that is uh, Ken Patterson here on the live stream. It's been great. Now, I'm going to have to sign off. It's We're, we're like way over time at the moment. But um, it's... Um, uh, oh, so I've just missed what's Ken's favourite diesel loco. I, I didn't get a chance to... Uh, I uh, didn't get a chance to ask him, but hopefully um, we sort out something. I mean, that was just an honour to have have the king of model rail on the, the live stream. So I hope you guys have all enjoyed that. Don't forget to like this video, share it too, and also subscribe to the channel. And you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying it has been absolutely amazing to have you all on. And I hope we've done the hobby justice. So until next time. Don't forget, um, same place, same bat time, same bat place, same bat channel. And uh, we've got a review of 3D printed models coming up on um, uh, Wednesday. Oh, excuse me. Um, so great range and a really great way. Excuse me, I'm getting gas from the Coke now. A really great way to kind of revive um, old toys that you may have had when you were younger. You want to give them a new lease of life. So look out for that. Friday, we've got the update video. We've had uh, uh, Les up in the loft doing the back scene. He isn't up there at the moment, but he is coming back tomorrow, hopefully to finish it off. And that's going to be a great video. Look out for that. And then Saturday, alluded to before, the new Hornby Lord Nelson with the factory fitted TTS sound. We're going to be doing the full review on that. And um, that is, um, I'll give you a sneak peek. It's a great model. I'm really pleased to see that at a great price. Um, I will name check them. I got it from Rails of Sheffield. It's in their bargain section. And um, I'm from what I've seen so far, it is a great model. So at that price, if that's something that tickles you, certainly um, um, something to look out for. But until next time, you take really good care of yourself and uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.